Welcome to Skarn, a land fraught with peril, adventure, and most of all, change. Around every corner lies a forgotten civilization. Behind every tale of adventure lies a journey fraught with temptation. Scratching the surface usually leads to breaking the veil between this era and the last, and those who look to fill in the edges of the map usually don't come back. This is a world where if one is willing, you can become famous and a hero, or just as easily forgotten. A world where every gamble has the odds against you, and the punishment is final, death, but the reward, your heart's desires. What would you do with endless opportunity and adventurer's spirit? We look to our players, heroes already in their own rights, to see how they plan to continue their legends. I bid thee greetings, redeemed and divine races, titan spawn and ancient ones. I am Patrick, known on by the whisper on the sea breeze and in the hearts of dragons as Patty Shakes underscore, and I am the game master for this story. This is session five of our continuing campaign, Draco Genesis, season two, A Flight of Whimsy, taking place in Scarred Lands, a setting published by Onyx Path Publishing. This is an awesome adventure brought to you by Vorpal Tales. You can find Vorpal Tales in lots of places on the internet. Of course, we are on Twitch right here, right now. Consider giving us a follow or subscribe. Check out all of our social medias, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at Vorpal Tales, where you can get updates about the cast and our goings-ons. A website, VorpalTales.com, where you can get links to our affiliates and see our up-to-date calendars. A Patreon and a Ko-Fi, where if you feel so inclined, you can toss a coin to us in order to make more, better, and Vorpal Tailier content. I'd like to thank Onyx Path Publishing for making an incredible world and setting to use to amaze and delight. Also to Astro Tabletop for being our virtual tabletop where we can see the baddies who look to waylay our heroes and get that sweet, sweet ambiance. Speaking of ambiance, a thank you goes to Vinsvet, a wonderful YouTube channel that has amazing music to set your adventure to. Additionally, Vorpal Tales has some fantastic sponsors we'd love to tell you all about. First is QEmpire.com, a small company making original dice and products for your favorite RPGs and card games. Use code VORPALTALES for 10% off. Next is Hitpoint Press, known for their various reference cards, but also for creating the Humblewood and Hecna campaign settings. Visit VORPALTALES.com, click on our affiliate link, and anything you purchase, a portion of it will benefit the show. And finally, Jim Hammer & Sons, an RPG supplement store that has everything from Decks of Wonder to Decks of Illusion to Dice. Once again, use the discount code VORPALTALES for 10% off. And now, dear viewers, meet our intrepid adventurers who look to sail, slay, search, seduce, and shift the very core of Skarn. Please state your name, where people can find you on the internet, and who you'll be playing tonight. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Kudu R. Kippy. And tonight I'm playing La Malfu, who is currently a rogue sideblade. And I am J3 Billion, otherwise known as John, otherwise known as Devok for tonight, our Eldritch Knight. Friends, my name is Birdie. I'll be playing Seeker Pajat. They, them pronouns, our mysterious cat mage. Hello, my name is Keems. You can find me anywhere on the interwebs at It's Me Keems. Tonight I'll be playing Sayana, um, the death cleric who is also a Hollow Legionnaire. Hey, everybody. I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they, and you can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling because it me, Am Changeling. Tonight, I shall be playing Yanei, whose pronouns are they, them. Hello, all. I am Devin, and you can find me online at Sorta Solid. And tonight, I am playing the Redemption Oath Paladin Gar, Gareth. Just don't call me Gareth, because, yeah, totally not that guy. Thank you, adventurers. Now, we shall have the indomitable Lamalfoon give a summary of events. When last we left our adventures, we met one of the king's private guard. The stranger calling Gar out by another name was none other than Florian, a member of the Vashan Dragoons. We quickly learned of the two's storied history as the royal guard ran their mouth about the Iron Order, Corian's relentless royal priests. Before Gar turned to Holy Mercy, he was known by another name and another reputation. 
Florian was quick to show us the way back to the searing heat of the blacksmith's district and to Medalia, the best smith in the he hegemony. We each asked after our chosen boons, a claw gauntlet, shields, armor, and the mouth and asked for a ring. After getting thoroughly lambasted by the elven smith, he was given his ring, a single broken adamantine loop off the chain mail the Dahlia was working on. Zot hung back a moment as the rest filled out and secured a suit of armor for the absent Devok, to which Dahlia agreed. But your interest seemed to be in the mythical Gorgon's paw of the Seeker wears. They were issued a warning. No mortal smith would have crafted something like this. Beware of what that might be. Thus we parted ways with Florian and made our way to the Mage's College. At the Lair, we sought directions from a strange and frazzled student that acted very guarded about his work. A secret rolled up tight and kept close to his heart whenever we would look. He was quick to show us the way to Zamuth and quick to leave afterward. But Malthun, of course, went to trail the odd student and learn the secrets of that scroll. So in we went to receive our boons from the Queen. Zamuth was an odd sort as well, a little halfling with a big personality. We learned of his position as head of enchanter for the lair end of his agreement, one, one item of our choosing. We were shown through a cramped passage into a massive chamber honeycombed with containers from the floor to a ceiling we couldn't even see through shadow. And as we each took our time to choose our booms, we cut to the mouth in. We never got that student's name, but through trial and error and manipulation, he puzzled out exactly what the acolyte was working on the means to summon a demon into our realm. After tricking the poor fool for the better part of an hour, our beloved elf snatched the scroll and the students slipped away. We left the lair with new trinkets indeed, and a new curiosity for what we've learned. King Verduk sent five other groups, not three as he'd promised. And finally, following a plea from Florian, we ride out past the gates to investigate the slow, winnowing of a nearby village's cattle. For hours we stand watch. For hours we feel our attention and ability to care waning. But it's in a split second that we see a baleful, scaly head whip out from beyond the forest line. And sharp teeth pick up a cow and And thus, as the other four heads weave out from between the branches and the sun sets below them, the shadows cast our title card that we open tonight. Draco Genesis Season 2. Like things. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, as always, the summary was read by Olafoon, written by Birdie, aka Seeker. Appreciate it very much. Both of you may have DM inspiration to start the night. What you might want to use on your initiative roll that you roll right now. Everyone, please roll initiative. I love rolling initiative. And I am going to use inspiration because that was. Same. I didn't like that. Um... Use my, my, my normal inspiration, not the DM inspiration. I'm saving those uh, plus 1d6s, which it definitely absolutely is for later. <laughs> I got a 22. Not 20, 23. Okay. 23 for the Seeker, 22 for Yane. A 14 for myself. 14 for Devok. A 4 for Sayana. Okay. Hey, I tied for last. <laughs> Uh, which both of your decks is? Plus um, one. I can tell you in a second. Let me have my character sheet pulled up. Plus two. Okay, so Cyan will Cyan, yep, Gar will be last. Uh, and Lamalthoon? 17. 17. Okay. Uh, as the 
uh, crocodilian mouth chomps down on the uh, cow, just engulfing it whole, and it just starts chewing on it. The other heads start to kind of snake their way out through the trees uh, to where your two close friends have been, Seeker and Yane, uh, the ones have been close to the woods patrolling. Uh, and it is Seeker who will be going first in our combat. Do I have a line of sight to have any, anybody else, or are oh. we still just going with the telepathy? Uh, to your friends, you could probably see you could probably see everyone. Uh, I'd kind of uh, narrated before that you were all kind of the way you were working was you were all within sight, visual, and auditory range of each other, mm-hmm. uh, and I kind of spread out as much as you could, keeping those rules to cover as much ground as possible. Okay. Um, they are immediately, like, their eyes are wide and then they snap down to these, like, little golden slits. And they say, Yane, with me! And they sprint back towards everybody else. I'm going to use a double move and my cat-like agility to just drop onto all fours and zip the fuck out of there back towards everyone else. And then when I get towards the tree line, you know, shouting in my head, like, um, Sayana! Gar, to the front. And so the head that is near you that is chewing the cow is too busy to take a bite at you. Uh, but one of the other heads snakes out and is going to attempt to uh, use an attack of opportunity on you as you uh, rally to your friends. Let's see. Does a 18 hit the seeker? 18 absolutely hits. Okay. I'm a That'll scholar. be nine points of piercing damage as the teeth Ooh. just get a hunk of your arm as you are a blur using your cat's agility, just moving just with all kinds of swiftness. And you it's almost like you teleport near Yune, but not before the quick, deceptively fast Hydra head is able to just almost, it feels like your arm is being ripped out of its socket as you are moving away from it and it's pulling you back. You win the battle of momentum, but not before it. You feel just this huge chunk of flesh missing from missing from your arm. Ugh. Okay. Uh, all right, so that's, you used all your movement and your action to move and all, yep. So you and Yune are now, uh, would be, you know, next to each other. Uh, and and it, Yune, it is your turn. Oh boy. So is at this Ambrose. point you kind of yeah, you kind of see everything. It is at this point that all the heads have kind of finished their way snaking through the woods, and you have clear sight on all five heads that are there. Uh, you don't quite see the main body of the hydra. Uh, it's, you know it's gotta be somewhere close in the woods right there. But for like uh, attacking purposes. You absolutely you you'll be able to you can attack it freely. It, it's not in cover or anything like that. Even though the main body that you don't see yet, there's enough heads out visually and not taking up enough space around you that you can definitely attack with no penalties or anything like that. Would so would you know you have any knowledge about a hydra? And I, I know Ambrose is like, yeah, you chop off the head, it's gonna pop up with more, but uh. Probably so. Hydras would be a common monstrosity within the horn saw, but give me a um, either a history or nature check uh, to see just how much knowledge uh, you may would have dealing with hydras. Oh, fuck yeah. I rolled a nat 20 and then my nice. nature is plus six. So, oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, with all of that, we'll say that you're. Uh, cl- both your clans that you spent time with would have dealt with a Hydra directly before. And with that, you'd have the direct knowledge of knowing that um, all the heads are ha- act independently of each other. It's almost as if each head is its own creature. Um, the fact that it is not fully out and it hasn't been rampaging through this village and just eating everything in the village, that cues you, that tips you off that something's up. There's a there's a reason why the Hydra isn't fully exposing itself, and that hasn't just kind of just torn through this village. A normal Hydra would would have eaten this village weeks ago. If it's just been snacking off one or two livestock a night, something's up. It might uh, be wounded. Potentially, 
Uh, another thing is you do know that while the heads, you know, you, you would know the myth, you would know the fact that cutting off a Hydra head causes two more to reappear, but you do know that that is, you know, that if that is its weakness, that if at any point you cut off all of its heads, it will die. Um, you know, if you can, if you are able to outpace the regrowing of heads by the, in, with cutting them off or injuring or killing them, that is a way to kill it. You also know with that 26, I will give you that fire is key to preventing regeneration of Hydra heads. If you were to bathe it, engulf it, do some fire damage to it of some sort, that would help stymie the growing of the heads. Uh, you also know basic facts about it that, you know, uh, it's a huge creature, it attacks with its heads, it can breathe underwater, um, things like that. Okay, um, I remember last season I had some fire arrows or something, but I don't know if Yene would still have those or not. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't remember specifically. It's been a little while since uh, last season uh, and just time-wise. So we'll say any special arrows you might have had just in your various adventures you might have gone through them. So at, for right now, you probably have all normal arrows. You still have your ranger spells available to you. So I don't okay. know if you have any fire ranger spells or fire arrow spells or anything like that. But as far as any special arrows you might have had, we'll say you might, you might have burned through them in the last two years. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> um, no, I don't have any fire spells, unfortunately, but I do have Hunter's Mark and I do have... Multiply missile. So, yeah. So you can, and you you do know that you have multiple magic users with you, and it's safe to assume at least one of them has a fire spell of some sort. Okay. Um, could it is is it an action to yell out to the party um, all the information? No, I, I would. That would. I just. Uh, you could give as a kind of a free action. You could just shout out like target its heads. Bathe it in fire, you know, and that would, that would be something you could do for free while you're firing your bow or whatever it is you would like to do as well. Okay, you know you will do that and uh, use multiply missile on um, my first arrow and okay. uh, aim for all the heads if that's possible. Yeah, so uh, for purposes of this, just to make it easier for you guys, um, We'll just uh, there. I'm the way I'm tallying it is just damage you're doing to it, and a certain damage amount. We'll say one of the heads is either killed or chopped off, um, so you don't have to worry about keeping track of which head you've done damage to. Um, I'm just going to kind of accumulate damage. So you could just say like you know you can you can flavor it and say I'm attacking this head or whatever. But for mechanical purposes, I'm just going to kind of at a certain threshold, a, a head will die. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. So that is my goal, and I shall. Where is my? Looking at my sheet. Looking at my sheet. How do I? Well, I never. <laughs> I rolled a uh, four, and it was plus ten, so fourteen. A 14 does not hit the Hydra, unfortunately. So your first arrow, it's kind of this, you know, Seeker has made their way over to you and you're wheeling about and you did, uh, Seeker is the one who saw the first head come out. And so you're kind of just wheeling about to where they shouted and then all of a sudden you saw their head just burst out of the tree line. And even though you are, you know what this is and you fought one before, it still catches you off guard as, you know, there would be, there would have been clear signs normally if a Hydra was here. And so you just kind of quickly knock and fire your arrow at the first Hydra head you see. And it just kind of bounces off of its scaly head, but it just kind of whips its head towards you. And now you are in its sights. Uh, do you have a second attack? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so exactly multiply missile. I think I do. Um, okay. Touch the arrow within eight hours. Use that arrow, blah, blah, blah. You have advantage on the attack roll and roll two extra damage dice. So, oh, well then roll a damage. Okay. I'm rolling my physical dice this time because digital dice hate me. And so do my physical dice now. 
Oh. I rolled a, a 16 total this time. It's two points more. A 16 does hit, though. Oh, shit. Sweet. Okay. Woo. 16 hits. Yeah. Uh, don't worry. You guys aren't at, like, AC 20 creatures yet. <laughs> you are still just level six heroes. Don't worry. It's not the, the to hit's not ridiculous yet. You still can put physical dice in dice jail. It's true. This is true. This is very true. And so that is two extra damage dice. Let's see how that one does digital. That was a 12 total for the first one. 12 damage? Yeah. Okay. And then a six. Okay. This is so... two extra, so is that three total or? Uh, yeah, so if, yeah, it, if it's two extra, then yeah, three dice. Okay, and I apologize. I am very, very tired, so I'm a no, little loopy okay. this evening. Well, it, this te- this is your first combat of the season, so it's okay as well. Thirteen. Uh, to add, to, so twelve, eight, thir- or twelve, six, thirteen is your yep. numbers. Okay. Uh, Okay, and actually, uh, as you, uh, as the multiplied missile just kind of, you fire it off and it bursts into three more, they all just kind of, two go in each eye, one goes down the throat of that hydra mouth that had kind of whipped its head around towards you, and it actually kind of just slumps over and just kind of awkwardly is now, you know, thrashing about on the ground, Uh, but it seems that you have dealt a killing blow to that head. Oh, God. Like it's gonna come out with two more, or it's. Oh, uh, no. Okay, so uh, oh, that was God. your first attack, and then uh, I think you, I, I believe you have a second attack. Uh, I believe you, you only, you've only taken one level of rogue, so you're level five ranger. So that should mean you have a second attack. God, I forgot how much I love rangers for that fact. That is a fifteen, sweet. Uh, so the plus 10 fi- is 25 to hit. A 15. Oh, a fi- oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I thought you said a 15 total. Uh, oh, a 25 sorry. definitely hits, yes. Okay. And that's with advantage, but... Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, that was the highest I was going to roll. <laughs> All right, so... It's a D8, okay, so... Nine for the first damage. I think the I believe I believe your multiply missile is only for one shot. Oh, yep, for, you're right. You're right. Oh, so, so nine damage. All right, so yep. uh, you so that first head slumps down to the ground. You quickly take aim at the second, fire the arrow. This one kind of just finds a a, a nook in between some of the scales and uh, pierces into the head, and it kind of opens its jaws, yelling at you as its uh, bead red eyes focus in. Uh, all right, so that it, would you like to move at all, or are you going to stay near Seeker? I am going to stick with Seeker. Okay. Uh, that means Seeker Lamalf- is squishy. Well, now it is us. your turn. Uh, apologies, I do not have the map up in front of me. How far away am I from the? Oh, uh, we're for the for this for this one. It is kind of uh, okay. we're uh, fear mining it. So there's yeah, there's no map. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Uh, okay. So you were on you uh, and the other two or any other three guard Devok and Sienna. We're on the opposite side of the pasture. So it would take a full turn to get on close enough to attack this Hydra, especially if you're going to go melee. Full turn, um, as in one Like you would have to, you, like your move, your move, your action, and your action would need to be movement as well. Okay. Um, then I will do that. Um, I'll go ahead and move. Double move all the way up um, and get into range. Let me check something. Dang. Dang. 
can't do that because I didn't take the attack action. Okay. All right. Uh, then in that case, um, I will do that and bonus action. Can I do a high just to not draw its attention to me, even though I moved into its um, thing? Since I have cunning action, as I can do hide as a bonus action. Sure, give me a stealth, and we'll you know uh, we'll kind of roll that into your move and see if you're able to kind of approach stealthily uh, without drawing okay. attention to, from any of the heads. Yeah, I know I'm not like stealth, stealth, but hopefully just maybe not drawing super attention to myself. Cool. Yeah, I mean it, it is night, and there's the pastures and the livestock, so there would be an opportunity to kind of be more blended in and not draw over attention to yourself. There are two clear targets for the Hydra to focus on right now. Sure. Okay. That is a 27 total for my stealth. 27 total. Okay. Yeah. We're going to say you were like moving behind like the cows as they were frantically sprinting around. And you've kind of taken up this position uh, behind one of the main fence posts uh, that makes up this kind of uh, pasture right here. Uh, and uh, while it's not completely covering your body, it, the, none of the Hydra heads seem to be focused on you right now. Perfect. Uh, uh, so that, I believe that is your turn. So we'll go on to uh, Devok. It is your turn now. Uh, same thing for you as you were on uh, the opposite side of this pasture. Uh, it would take your action and your movement to get within range to uh, be melee. Um, okay, you would could, you say... Go ahead. Would you say it's 30 or 60 feet away? It actually does matter. So your movement, I believe, is you have a, you have a movement speed of 30. So it would take uh, 60 feet of movement to be okay, within the range range okay. this thing. Yeah. Uh, all right, then. In that case, I'd be like, oh, fire. Well, shit, I've got fire. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move, and I am going to cantrip firebolt this thing. Okay. Uh, give me an attack then. Uh, twenty, please. Uh, twenty total to hit. Mm -hmm. That does hit. Go ahead and roll some damage. Uh, we're looking at ten damage total. Two d ten. Uh, and then. I will toss a hand axe as a bonus action. Okay. At disadvantage, or yes, disadvantage. Okay. Yeah, because it's uh, at the long range of it. Yeah, because it's at, it's at thirty feet, not twenty. Uh, I'm assume that that's a fourteen, so that didn't hit before. So I can hit now. All right, excellent. Alrighty. So Devok kind of. Uh, pulls the giant axe off his back, splitting it into two, kind of Naruto trailing the ground behind him, running up, and <laughs> pulls one up, channels the fire bolt through the first axe, fires it off, and it bathes, uh, washing over the head that's kind of flailing on the ground, and you see it actually burn off the entire head that's on the ground, singeing off the neck area and then he throws the second axe and it actually embeds uh into one of the necks of the hydra and then just kind of sits there for a second blinks back to his hand but there's no damage done to the excellent I mean, the out the exterior of the neck um so it made contact just didn't actually do any damage to it uh anything else you'd like to do with your uh turn to block i believe that is it though that's it all right it is the Hydra's turn. Uh, and while Devok was able to bathe it in its hated fire, it's just a bit outside of its range. And there are two juicy targets, one of them that has already killed one of its heads right in front of it. So using the four heads it still has alive, it's going to unleash a fury of bites and blows and just these heads just wind back and forth like a cobra's head. And they just move in multiple rapid strikes in on Yane and uh, the Seeker. So both of you are going to get two attacks. Hold on a sec. Yes. I used 120 feet of movement to get away from this thing. How am I still next to it? Well, it was like laterally mm -hmm. almost. That's a so big it came, it came. Yeah, so it came out. Its heads are coming streaming out from the woods. And it's almost like all of them horizontally. Right. And you move horizontally down that line to where Yane was. I was running directly away from the Hydra. Well, to get to Yane, it wouldn't be away 
Yanae was also on the I side of the pasture. I didn't say I wanted to on. go to Yanae. I said I wanted to go and call Yanae to me. I was encouraging us to run away. I misunderstood. Oh, I because I thought you said you were going to Yanae, and then I was like, so you're at Yanae? Oh, no. Um, Secret Pajat was like, Yanae to me. Yeah, I was getting yeah. the hell out of there. I don't want to be near this thing. Pajai's uh, My plan was to Pajai. run into the village and find a torch, because I don't have one. Okay, so then, Yine, what would you, let's just go back real quick. Yine, would you have moved then? Yeah, the Hydra probably would have gotten uh, an attack of opportunity on me um, after I shot off some arrows, because after okay. I did the arrows, I, I moved. Okay, so the way the, to move, so I was like, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, okay. We'll, we'll, the way we'll fix this is we'll just say the head, the head, it was what could have attacked you. you that's the one you killed. And the, the two of you are now, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be with the seeker because the seeker would completely outdistance you. They can move, move they can move faster. double, they can move double your speed. So Holy the seeker shit. would be like in, yeah, the seeker with their, uh, uh, skill, uh, can move 120 feet. So they would be actually like already, and they'd be back in the village essentially. And then you would be where the other heroes, like that, where Lamalthoon and Devox started. If that Thank makes you. sense. And so you would have been on the of the pasture. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, to me. So then uh, the you hear the trees rustling and rumbling and the they all they start to part so several of them fall down as you can't still can't quite make it out but it seems like the body of the hydra has moved forward and the heads just almost like uh uh like birds just kind of swoop down across the grassy plain and just moved quickly like un unbelievably fast right across the ground and uh they don't see the uh but they definitely see devok who has just gone full orcish fury uh so they'll move up uh two of them will go towards devok and uh two will go to um oh i can take all four give them to me give me give me all four no no they uh <laughs> they would they would want to attack all their targets i like your attitude though <laughs> uh okay uh cyana will be one gar will be two okay. one is cyana all right so two is going to go in towards the buck and two towards cyana uh the buck uh does a 26 hit you. <laughs> oh god Okay, I wasn't ready for that number. <laughs> Shit. That was a pretty high roll. Okay. <laughs> I, could, so I love 26. those questions. Yeah, uh, I'm, re I'm ready for it. Give me some damage. And then a miss, uh, for sure. <clears throat> okay. Shit, I'm, uh, I'm sitting take... here going... I'm sitting here going, my AC at 23, if I pop the shield, it's going to be good. <laughs> uh, you take eight piercing damage uh, as the... Once again, this this huge this cross between like a boa constrictor and a crocodile's head just opens up larger than it should be able to, and you just before it can engulf you whole like it did the cow, you kind of just step to the side using the axes to help guide the head, but it does get a chunk out of your leg as it just kind of bites straight into the ground and it pulls up and just this the chunk of earth it removes is almost like uh, an excavator had been there and it spits out the rock and dirt as it kind of shakes its head and uh, looks to uh, keep lashing out. Cyana, the two heads coming towards you uh, does a 15 hit does not 19 okay. to hit. And the other one is lower than that. So both heads, they kind of rise up over uh, the the, uh, the fence of the pasture. And one kind of uh, gets stuck momentarily in it and is kind of has to wiggle it, breaks open the wooden bit of the pasture. And that kind of distracts enough to you for you to kind of keep moving, running. And then the second one strikes at you and you just kind of do the back juke moment and it just flies in front of you recoils back looking to strike again <clears throat> so 
Sienna, it is your turn. Awesome. Um, so given the positioning, is one right in front of me at this point in time or? Yes, you would be at this point, you would be in melee with the Hydra is kind of how we'll play it. We're not going to worry about, like I said, we're not going to worry about individual heads. Just All in right. general, you are in melee with the Hydra. Awesome. Um, Sienna, uh, with a pretty wild look on her face as she's very eager to spill blood, um, no matter whose it is, she's going to cast Inflict Wounds um, on one of the Hydra's heads. Okay. Go ahead and give me an attack, please. Ah, uh, Beans. Um, I want to use one of my inspirations from last roll, from last game, to re-roll that, too. Okay. Go for it. All right, does a 21 hit? 21 definitely hits. Go ahead and roll some damage. Heck yeah. All right, that's 22 points of damage. 22. All right, and with that, uh, just at the one that had kind of moved, that you had back juked in time for it and had struck in front of you as it's moving back, once again, just whipping back at this incredible pace. It's like uh, the rope that's attached to an anchor as it falls off a boat is the same way this snake's head goes as it just rustling across the ground. But you just in time are able to reach out, touch the, just touch the scales of the Hydra. And as you do this, this unindating black pulsing magic comes out through your hand and just washes over the entire Hydra's head and goes, travels along, follows along the neck all the way into some point that you can't see in the forest still. And it does, it just stops and stops moving immediately. And just, there's no, there's no flopping about. There's no, there's no grand final death keel or anything like that. It just, it's as if the life was just immediately pulled from it and the second Hydra head is dead. Uh, all right, that is your action. Is there anything else you'd like to do with your bonus action and your movement? Um, at this point, I'm assuming Seeker Pajat is pretty far away from me, um, farther than yes. 60 feet? Uh, it would be close. Okay. Uh, you, I would say you would need to move further towards the village uh, mm -hmm. Which would which the Hydra would take an attack opportunity against you? Okay, um, Sayana won't do that. Um, she won't make any move actions. She's just going to stand tall and um, prepare for another attack from the Hydra. Okay, and it's a good thing you are because the three remaining heads are going to launch out a flurry of attacks again. Uh, so two the two that are kind of harassing Devok are going to focus on you. And uh, the one other one that's on uh, you, Sina, is going to go back against you as well. Uh, Devok, uh, a 17, does that hit? It does not. Okay. And the other one is the other attack is lower. And then the one in Sina. Wow, that really played with your heartstrings. That is a 27. I assume that definitely hits. Definitely hits. All right. You're going to take. Uh, 11 points of piercing damage as this one kind of just gets into your side and you feel the the armor that makes up your essence, your, who you are, just gets completely crushed and dented in. And while you don't have a physical body to bleed or react, you just kind of feel just the cold rush of, you know, death, danger, fill you. Uh, all right, Gar, it is your turn. All right, so it's now within like one movement. I don't have to double up, right? Correct, yes. Okay. Uh, Sayana, you were hit multiple times, right? Mm, just once by it for just 11 once. points of damage. Mm -hmm. Who was hit harder, Sayana or uh, John? Duvok. I got hit for eight. I don't know how much. So okay, not, I will. Not much, I will, actually. I will uh, run up next to Sayana then. And uh, I will attack this wonderful Hydra. All right. So that way, Sayana gets my uh, boosts. Uh, I'm going to use a reroll on that one because I know that a five is not the best number to use. That's much better. That's a. Uh, Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen does hit. Okay. 
then there's not a G8. So then let me just use this. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to use my uh, Divine Smite to make this a little bit better because that was a uh, a one, which makes that a uh, seven. Okay, go ahead. So Divine Smiting it for an extra two die eight, and that's an eight, so that's 15 and 18 total on that one. Okay. And uh, if it's still alive, then I will use my extra attack. Yes, this head to, is still uh, up. I finish that one off. And that is an 18, 20 something. So that hits. Yes, yes it does. It hits for another uh, 13 damage. 13, okay. That's like 20. <laughs> eight. Uh, 18, 13 is 21. 30, 31. 31. Yes, sorry. I, I, I can I can math. I, can, I know how to do math. Quick <clears> math. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, you, uh, you kind of quickly run up to Cyana, uh, the two of you kind of pincering this head that's been uh, harassing her. You just kind of whirl around your spear, and with one quick stab, you get it uh, in the, kind of in the back of where the neck would be, and it rears up, bears its teeth at you. You pull out and just go up through the roof of the mouth, and this head just kind of falls lifeless on the ground. Uh, anything else in your turn, Gar? Uh, that'll be it for this turn. Okay. Uh, that is the first round of combat down. Good job, team. Uh, however, the fire that bathed that first head you cut off did not bathe the other two heads you cut off. <laughs> Four heads sprout out, coming whipping through the forest uh, and take the place of the two that you chopped off. So, doing maths, there are six heads now. It's too many heads. It's enough with the head slicing thing. It's too many heads. However, you have, you know, these while these heads are fresh, unmarked on damage, you do kind of see the other heads. They, you know, they briefly take stock, look at each other, assess, and the, the two that survive that kind of flurry, that onslaught your team get put against it, it you know, it, it, it looks worried. And you start to kind of assess the attack that had given you, and it seemed it attacked more out of fear or self-defense than wanting to think it could actually, you know, you know, eat you as prey. It was more of a we're a cornered animal and we're lashing out. Uh, Seeker, it is your turn. You are official. We'll see. You are officially in the at any spot, kind of in the village you wanted to be that was near the pastures. It, like I said, it's a very small village, so yeah. it's a, you can kind of play loosey goosey with where you are. If there's anything like a bell uh, next to that, if there's anything like a torch, they're going to swipe a torch. They're going to hit the bell, or otherwise just shout. Uh, uh, there would probably be like a, a an emergency bell of some sort because, uh, like I said, there this town didn't have any defenses, so its defense would be kind of like a hey, shit's shit's going down, you know, get to the city into behind walls. So yep. yeah, we'll say there there would be a bell of some sort you could ring. They're gonna hit that right away, grab a torch, okay. and then after they've ding, got ding, people's ding, attention, ding 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 ding, and you hear like the doors start to you know slowly open. Ones that are closer to the pastures, you hear people start to scream. Uh, as they see, you know, either the dead Hydra heads on the ground or the ones just kind of whipping up in the air, harassing uh, you heroes. Uh, so people are screaming. Some are smart enough to start running towards uh, the city while others just kind of, you know, they try to like cower in their house or it's just kind of everyone is up in the village at this point. And then, right. yeah, there, there would be enough torches just kind of about that you could definitely just grab one as well. If possible, I would like to shout at these villagers uh, to get them to comply in a safer manner. Um, persuasion or intimidation, either yeah. one. But what yeah, I want I'm... is specifically anybody with a bow, anybody with a spear to me, everybody else to the city. Okay, you can use, uh, go ahead and roll either persuasion or intimidation, however you want to go about it. Uh, to try to, 
Okay, sure. Uh, but as 25. far as uh, 25, so the the people that were kind of just running around, like with their heads cut off, kind of, you, you know, you're just kind of go run to the city and they kind of snap out of it a little bit and they start, you know, leaving the village in the correct direction. Um, and then, but as far as, you know, anybody that can stay, like the only people that would, like and any warriors would be like you know whoever goes out and hunts the deer for the village that's like, all i need okay so you get like uh uh kind of a younger man uh and uh, an older woman who stay and they're like we have we have skill with the bow uh we'll do what we can but you know we're not and this kind of gesture towards this hydra that's got you know these heads failing all about and ripping up chunks of the ground as they miss you guys in you know things like that they're just like uh we don't they, 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 it's not like they have like a they have like three arrows in their hand and this like beat up old bow that's been passed down for generations oh i got you i got you do i have an action left uh we'll say you have a bonus action the action was kind of to ring the bell and get and kind of shout some orders uh Fair. we'll say you have a bonus action left then let's see if that's the case um I am. I'm just going to, you know, instruct them to where to be, to stay out of reach, to maintain a line of sight, and then I'm gonna start showing them how to properly light their arrows on fire. Okay. Take out like, right. a flask of oil and some some uh, spare cloth, and just like get to the means. You know, we'll have fire next round, hopefully. Okay. Uh, I will uh, add to the mission order. Archers. <laughs> uh, Getting NPCs they rolled pretty to turn well heads for us. Nice. They rolled pretty well in their initiative. Uh, remind you, I don't have any damaging spells. I'm here to okay. help. <laughs> All right. Uh, Yene, it is your turn. Ah, uh, yes. I, um would like to light some of my arrows on fire okay uh we'll say as a bonus action you can kind of uh uh there you you because you ran back towards the village as well so you'd be near kind of where the edges would be where there'd be lit torches so we'll say you'd be able to kind of uh you know sc you know scoop some arrowheads on fire as your bonus action yes and uh would i also be able to multiply missile a lit arrow or not so much? Uh, I believe multiply missile is is your bonus action. Um, okay, so I'd so rather yeah, have so, the fire. <laughs> yeah. All so right. Yeah, you could like you could do it next turn uh, if you had the spell slot for it. Um, but this turn, your bonus action was to get them on fire. Perfect. Oh, alrighty. So then I have the two attacks. All right, go for it. That is a 16 plus, uh, 16 26 plus. to hit. Yep, that, that definitely hits. Yes. And I will do the damage. The damage. Mm, yes. Nine Demage. for the first hit. Nine damage, okay. Uh, second hit. It's a 27 total. Oh, yeah. We love to see that. Oh, yeah. And. Good, 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 good call. Switching to the physical dice, it sounds like. 13 total for the damage, the second damage. Okay. They're my. I, I pulled out my fall <laughs> dice. Aren't they pretty? <coughs> Ooh, just very nice. Pain in the ass to read because the font is ridiculous. So I have to like stare at it. <laughs> All right. So with some of the bleed over damage, uh, you just quickly fire off the two fire arrows and they both just kind of stack up on this uh, hydra head and just kind of slowly just burst in the flame. Not It doesn't make like it doesn't even it doesn't quite make sense. There's nothing flammable on this creature that would make for it for it burst in the flame. But uh, it just seems that it's just so adverse to fire that once you've done it, once this head dies and it has 
you know, contact with the fire at all. It just completely is engulfed. And once again, a completely burned and singed off uh, neck is left behind. Yes. Hey, are these edible? The the Hydra heads? Yeah, why not? You the jaw meat try. the really good stuff is. Well, we we uh, solved world hunger here. <laughs> we're done. Yeah. We're done. Just keep one alive with one head in the basement and just keep cutting it off over and over again. Uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, it's a key. solid plan. <clears throat> uh, I'm sure eating Hydra meat for the rest of your life has no adverse side effects. Uh, that was your bonus action. Your action. Would you like to move? Uh, you could move further into the village if you want. You could go closer to the Hydra for whatever reason if you wanted to. I just want to place myself between the Hydra and Seeker Pajat because I know that if Seeker Pajat is behind me, they will not get attacked by said Hydra. And as long as I have access to torches, I'm a happy elf. Okay. Uh, we'll say kind of staying where you are would be best bet as you're not quite sure where, you know, you heard the bell ring um, and you hear Seeker barking some orders, uh, but you're not quite sure where in the village they are. So you just kind of, you're like, I'm just going to stay right where I was. They know where I was. So it's up to them to use me, uh, you know, because I'm the one shooting arrows at this beast. Don't you uh, mean meowing some orders? Okay. <sighs> Buck, it is, or Lamalthun, I'm sorry, Lamalthun is your turn. Okay, um, so these heads are coming out of the tree line, but we have not yes. seen a body, correct? Correct, it, it, but where you are, since you did rush ahead, uh, and with your uh, new ring that you have and all that jazz, uh, your elf eyes are able to uh, <laughs> see into the floor. <laughs> what do your elf eyes see? What do my elf um, eyes see? Uh, you are able to see the body of this Hydra, um, and it is just a torn up mess. It is missing a leg. There is a large gash down the main chest area of this beast. Um, and it's almost like pulsating like each time it, it, that one of the uh, heads attacks or bites or something like that. It just kind of pulses once again. Um, it seems to be really struggling here. Hmm. Something done fucked this thing up. Yep. But you put two and two together of how long this village has been having this problem, and you're pretty sure that whatever fucked it up is not here. It has run it ran away from whatever did the damage and it has been hiding here. To recover. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, you're pretty sure whatever threat did this to the Hydra is not also here. I was gonna say because I was expecting a bigger fish moment. No, happen. no, not this time. All right. Okay. Then in that case, if I can see it, I can see all of that. Um. Yeah. Let's just. I was gonna go into the woods, but it seems like I, I've got the information there. So. um Maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe I should go into the woods. Go into the woods alone, right? That's always the good bet. Yeah, absolutely. If it works, it works. Okay. Um, I'm in melee range because I did the double move last round. Um, I'm yes. just hidden. So I'm going to do rapier attack. Okay. <clears throat> and you are attacking from hidden, so you can get advantage and you can have sneak attack. A sneak attack question. Sure. If you deal a different damage type, is the sneak damage also of that type? So, like, if you hit with a psi knife, is it psychic type sneak damage? Yes. The okay. extra damage is of the damage type that is being caused. Very cool. Um, Thank yes. you. Most cool. of the time, it will be uh, piercing or slashing or whatever your weapon is, uh, because the rules of sneak attack are usually like it must be a finesse one-handed weapon like blah 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 so yeah but sign knife you know, lets you do funny right. mind so stuff but yeah so you can't like sneak attack with a spell even if you are a rogue um, Got it. but yeah psi knife psi brain psi shenanigan guy can definitely it's yeah it's all it's all it's all psychic 
It's all brain. It's all brain hurty. That's a twenty-six to hit. Yep, that hits. Which is six damage. I'm sure there's more coming to that, correct? <laughs> I'm sure that was just another nine. Plus another nine sneak attack damage. Okay. And then on the offhand bonus action, okay. I will hit it with my psychic blade. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, does a 23 hit it? Yes, it does. Another eight damage on top of that. And that's psychic damage. Oh. Okay. Uh, and are you, so you, did you move closer to the woods and like, are you attacking so, its, so, its body or are you attacking a head? So I will attack a, um, We've been yelled out. We've been told, like, focus on the heads, right? So whichever head I'm closest to, I will jump out and I will stabinate that, right? I'll come out with the rapier. I'll kind of do a spin. And I'll slash it across, like, an eye and then kind of reach out with my left hand, create the side blade, and just kind of ram it through. Um, but at that point, um, using move 30 feet, um, sticking next to its neck so as to not... Um, do attack of opportunity, I will actually start moving towards the woods um, and, and going in kind of in, in the tree line. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to modify your attack just a little bit. So sure. you stick in with the rapier first and then you kind of just use it to propel yourself to flip around it. And as you do, you're cutting with the side blade and you just leave this bloodless smoking crater of where the head used to be as it just kind of flops onto the ground uh, as you are able to do enough damage to cut that head off. Uh, and then you are able to move, you know, at, I would say how far it's moved up and start attacking. With your 30 feet of movement, you're able to get into the woods uh, and kind of be pretty close to where the main body is. Enough to where, like, the... you. Like the, there's a smell coming off the wound that fills your nostrils. You're just like, oh, it's like death, but not like, you know, human body death. It's like, you know, if you could somehow picture what like Titan spawn or monstrosity carcass would smell like, that's the smell you've got. And it's horrible. Uh, and you, you know, Lamalfoon is immediately thinking like, this is probably a mercy kill at this point. Like it, this thing is... It's pretty. It, that, that like you like you also have a clear picture of the wound. Like that is, that's not getting Pretty healed. Significant one, yeah. What? Yeah, uh, you're you, you're more like. I'm really glad. Like, really hope this thing, whatever did this, didn't follow it somehow. Because that is that is a true enemy right there. Yeah, yeah. This is what I was thinking earlier. Okay, that's my run. Um, All right, uh, Devok, uh, it is your turn. Uh, there are four heads remaining, um, and uh, you you know you know about the whole fire trick as well. Uh, all right, so and I can use my bonus action, my action any any order I want. Yeah. Um, I am going to attack with an axe as my bonus action, real quick. Okay. Uh, 21. 21 hits. For, well, minimum damage. Excellent. Uh, six damage on that. Six and damage, okay. then I am going to burn a spell slot. Okay. And specifically try and get all the heads, even the one that was, like, just, had just fallen. Um, I have burning hands, so I'm going to leave the axe... I'm gonna leave the axe that was it that's in the head in the head because I know I get bonus damage from that. Okay. And I'm just gonna sweep my hand over the blade and just light them up. Okay. Yeah. Um. 
the difference, yeah, the difference between your Firebolt cantrip and this Burning Hand spell uh, will say that this will definitely affect all of the severed heads. Um, so this, uh, I, I think it's just, uh, it does get a save, I believe, correct? Yep, DC 14 decks. Okay, let me roll it save. Ooh, that's a natural 20 on the save. Um, uh, so, it's, it's, it's still, so it's still half damage, I believe. Um, and we'll say that this also blankets all of the severed heads. We'll say you can get your cone in a, in a, in a position uh, where this will prevent the regeneration for a full round. So this is going to be um, 11 damage total, so I believe that's rounded up to 6, yes? Okay. And that'll be my turn. Okay. Uh, it is now... <laughs> it is now the... Uh, the archer's turn. <laughs> uh, they will both fire a a fire arrow. Uh, oh, God, I was rooting for them. Unfortunately, they will both miss. One, the um, the younger the younger man is just kind of like his hand just shaking the entire time, and he lets the arrow go. And it's just like thunk, just goes into the ground, not too far away. Uh, the older woman, however you know steady your hands let's go and the arrow actually makes contact with one of the necks but it just bounces off one of the hard scales uh it doesn't actually do any damage unfortunately uh now it is the hydra's head's turn uh they're gonna snap at devok and uh they're gonna see that gar has moved into a kind of protective stance uh, over Sienna, and we'll snap at him as well. So, two coming at Devok. Actually, we'll do uh, Gar's first since Devok slipped away. Uh, a 26 and a 13, Gar. Well, one of those hits. Okay. It's the 13. Uh, ooh, interesting. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, you will take... I'm not rolling really well tonight for the Hydra. Uh, you will only take seven piercing damage uh, as you're able to kind of get the shield up, but this being not your usual shield, um, you're able to block one of the bites, but the second one kind of slips past a little bit and chomps into your shield arm uh, and you're able to kind of rest it free before it drags you away. Uh, Is uh, Duvac standing next to me as well? No, where kind of how you guys okay, are spread out. Okay. Yeah, it's just okay. No, I just was checking. Uh, and then uh, the two heads at Devok. Uh, much better. Uh, a 21, does that hit you, Devok? Uh, it would normally. I am going to pop a spell slot, and I'm going to shield up. Okay. Then does uh, a 25 hit you? Yep. Oh, okay. I thought shield might have saved you on both hits. But it saved you from one. The right way. It, it worked. Ooh. Uh, take 14 piercing damage as <laughs> both heads kind of come at you simultaneously and you just, you know, using your uh, using your uh, free hand now as one of the axes buried into the Hydra, you just kind of m make a motion and this invisible barrier comes and the first head just kind of smacks into it and it's just this moment of, you know, uh, bird on glass and it even makes the kind of like sliding down motion then the second head just bursts through the barrier and is able to get a nice chomp on you you know kind of your head is briefly in it and it's as the luckily where the teeth lie though none of them pierce through your head but it's just got your upper shoulder neck head area there's kind of a good amount of blood gushing out from that wound no yeah, this will leave a nice scar that's for sure uh, Cyana, it is your turn. Uh, you are muted. Sorry about that. That last attack hit Gar, right? Just to confirm? Or was that uh, on Devok? One, one hit Gar, one hit Devok. Okay, got so it. So both, so yeah, so both were hit. Um, so Cyana is going to place a hand on Gar, um, and she's going to look him in the eye as best she can. And she says, I give you this, but it comes at a price. I expect you to spill more blood. And she's going to cast Healing Word. Okay. Uh, so you, uh, just at first level? Yeah. Okay, that'll be uh, 1d4 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. 
Of course. I'm trying to find it on. Uh, it's whatever your uh, your clerics, whatever your wisdom uh, bonuses. Right, right. Here we go. Oops. That's going to be six points of healing. Nice. All right. Uh, you said that was on Gar? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Gar, um, you are healed for six. Um, and then she's going to switch it up a bit. Um, and as that was her bonus action, she's going mm -hmm. to take her Paradise Lost Axe in her hand, um, raise it above her head, and bring it down upon one of these Hydra's head. Okay, go ahead and give me an attack roll. All right. Does a 19 hit? Yes, it does. All right, rolling for damage. That's going to be 11 points of slashing damage. 11 points. Nice. Um, and that is her turn. You smash it down onto the Hydra's head, and it doesn't quite do enough to pierce through the head and brain it, but you do see it just noticeably does crush the skull a little bit, and it's completely shaken. Not quite enough to kill the head, but it is that that it is not looking too good. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, the heads are going to flurry again, and uh, uh, still two on Devok and uh, two on Gar here. Uh, Devok, I believe your shield is still up because it's until your next turn. Correct. Uh, so a 20 would not hit with your shield up, correct? It would not. All right. Magic number is 23. Uh, and then Gar, a 21. Oh, by one. Okay, and the other one's higher than that. Uh, so both of these heads are going to hit you. Uh, so you're going to take uh, 12 from one of them and nine from the other. As they kind of just kind of sway crisscrossing on one another as they move in and you're you know kind of trying to keep up with them and you kind of jab one bash the other but they still are intertwined crisscross each other actually and both just kind of chunk out of your calf chunk out of your shoulder uh but it is your turn you it is time to retaliate all right let me just shoot one thing really quick before i go through that i just want to make sure if i can use Okay, yeah, it's only if I hit. Okay, so uh, attack one does a 20 hit. Yes, it does. Okay, and uh, since this thing is still going, I'm going to try to blow away multiple heads and expend divine smite on, well, let's make sure I have this, yeah, on both my turn, or both of my attacks here. So okay. uh, two plus seven plus five is 14 plus six is 20 on the one head. And okay. hopefully, hopefully this hits this next head, uh, 23. Yep, that hits. Okay, and the next head gets, uh, let's do, wow, that was awful. My Divine Smite did a total of three damage. So that's, mm. uh, 13 on the other head. Uh, that was okay. really bad. Three that out of is, 16. That was enough, though. Uh, that was a so, digital dice the, roll. So these two heads that are kind of, that were, uh, that had kind of actually x themselves to get the two attacks on you, gives you the perfect opening. You just kind of take that curved bit of your uh, spear and just kind of rake underneath one of the necks and just slice it open and warm guts bathe the ground as it rithers and wriggles and dies on the ground. And then you're, you spin the spear around, you actually pierce it through both eyes. It enters in one and then goes out the other on the other side, <sighs> looking like a horrible piercing of some sort. You kind of have to like work at it a little bit and jimmy your spear out of it. Uh, hey, but you are able to slay both of those heads. You. <laughs> There's actually only two heads left standing. Uh, and it's Seeker, it is your turn. And you kind of have wait with bated breath as you didn't, you weren't able to see Devok's spell go off, but you look and it's just those two heads of the Hydra. Nothing, no other heads pop up from the uh, necks of this beast. 
and uh, you're starting to feel you've got this thing on the ropes. How wounded do these last two look? Uh, these two heads look pretty fresh. They're two of the newer ones. Um, but, you know, it started at five and you've cut off enough heads that it's it's down to two. And if you, you know, you kind of get this feeling like if we really just focus here, we can, uh, the heroes I have in my company, we can get these two heads. Um, yeah, I think the move here is now that I've got these, these two trying their best uh, to focus on the archer that I know can hit her target their target um and Pajat is going to uh sweep their cloak over their injured arms so nobody can see the the writhing mass under there and then sure. walk up to Yane and just place a hand on their shoulder again um they they fish out a handful of teeth from their pocket and they place the they sprinkle them into Yane's quiver and the the enamel sprouts up around each of the flaming arrows. I'm casting magic weapon. Okay. Uh, so that'll give you, I believe it gives you an extra plus one to your uh, attack and damage rolls. Uh, you? And is uh, and it makes the, if, it were, if they weren't already, it would make the attacks magical, but your bow is magical. So that, uh, that part is not, but it does give you an extra plus one to uh, attack and damage rolls. Uh, okay, so that would be your action. Uh, and your movement to get back to Yune. Anything you'd like to do with your bonus action? Nope. All right. Yune, it is your turn. You kind of reach back and you pull the first arrow to knock it and take aim. And you see that the arrowhead has kind of got this twisted and gnarled and weird growth coming off of it. But it doesn't feel any heavier. And as you pull it, you don't feel any additional resistance. So you're not worried about it's affecting your uh, your shot, but it does look kind of gruesome and horrible. I'd like to add fire. You just quickly dip it into the torch, uh, getting some of the, uh, the the pine tar that's at the bottom of the torch, and it instantly blazes to life. You have a fire arrow. Oh, boo. Um, 18 total. 18 hits. Hit. Okay. And I forgot to do it for your last arrow, but. Uh, oh, roll 19, because of plus one. Uh, roll an extra d4 for, for the fire damage uh, on this. Yeah. So, damage on that one will be a two plus seven plus the one, so eight. And then the. Additional fire damage will be a three. So just add that all together. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. So or... you said two, one, seven, three. I think is what you said. Oh, uh, don't don't mind that. Um, oh, sorry. The the total damage pre-fire is eight. Okay. So eight, and then the fire damage you just said was? Three. Okay, yeah. so 11. 11 total. All right. Oh, okay, right. so I do add it in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can just add it all together. Okay, so the first arrow uh, buries into the neck of one of the two remaining heads uh, and just stays in it. it. Once again, you kind of thread the needle between the interlocking uh, scales in this thing. Uh, like this is it's it like like you like the other archers saw it. You can it's very easy to hit this creature. It's quite large, but you were actually finding all the weaknesses and its scales and embedding your arrows into it. Sweet. Uh, uh, go ahead and roll your other arrow. All right, you darn d twenty. What is wrong with you today? Now. You were good earlier. Uh, that is a 13 total, so that doesn't hit probably. 13 does not hit, unfortunately. So this one, not the it, the neck, you know, it's writhing in pain, and it's you just the spasm. You're not you didn't account for, and it bounces off uh, the neck. Unfortunately, not finding purchase. Uh, anything like to do with your bonus action? Uh, no, I don't think there's anything. Okay. Uh, all righty. 
Uh, that is Lamalthoon. It is your turn. So, creatures. Does it say creature? Uh, it would technically be a monstrosity. This does not count mechanically as a creature. Well, uh, so the the naming nomenclature in Five E, everything is a creature, and then a monst monstrosity is a subgenre of monster. So like monster and creature are kind of interchangeable in, in 5e. And then a monstrosity is a type of monster. I know it's weird, but I don't know. That makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to I want to see the wound that it has. And then I'm going to drop my psychic link with everybody. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to re up the psychic link. Okay. So you want to examine the wound? The wound? Not examine the wound. I'm going to re up my psychic link. Um, so I can still choose up to three creatures that I can see. Roll a psychic energy die, which is a d8. Um, d8. So for one hour, uh, who can I see in the party from just inside the tree line where I can see the body? Uh, you prob most melee. clearly, yeah, most clearly would be Gar, Devok, Gar, and Sina. Okay. Um, then Gar and Devok, I will connect with because Sina is Sina. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they intimidate you. God, worshiper of the murder god. Not not cool. Um, okay. Uh Love you, teams. Um so... You don't want any murder goddess in your head? <laughs> Noted. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna pick those two and the Hydra to make okay. my psychic connection to. Um I'm assuming either head works. Yeah, you like the way the high, like you just make you just pick the Hydra. And gotcha. You just kind of yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I wasn't sure if this was a dumb, dumb, and dumber situation. All right. Uh, just for your information, for a number of hours, you go to the number rolled one. The chosen creature can speak telepathically with you, and you can speak telepathically with them as long as you are within one mile. You and the creature don't need to speak a common language to understand each other. What if it doesn't speak any languages? It's like a psychic. Like it, it, it literally, that's all like it's, it's like the first. It's, it's not a, so beast is like a subtype of monster. It's not, it's, it has the intelligence of a beast. Like it has, it has a two intelligence. Which I, I believe, like a, a two, six, allows it communication at all. I, th I think a six is usually what's required for like base communication. I thought, I thought minimum three. Uh, I, regardless, I don't yeah. I, like you. You get like you're not able to like you get like base instinct urges off of it. So right now, it, you what you would get by kind of melding your minds would be like hurt, fight, live. Um, I mean, could I try? If you don't, I'll say you can retcon and not do this, knowing that like this is kind of a it it it, it is a beast. It's not while it is dragon like. It does not have any sure. intelligence similar to a dragon. Like it's not like a, a a dragonling or a wormling or even a wyvern that might you know have a more base kind of intelligence. Like this is just a this is a killing monstrosity machine. You can't keep it as a pet. 
I don't want to keep it as a pet. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to get it as a pet. If that's what you're worried about. I no, I. I no. I'm not. I. I. I know Lamalfu would not want a pet. Yeah, I, I got no time for a dog. Um. Are you trying to like think? Are you trying to like read its mind and kind of figure out what attacked it? Kind of that, and kind of just like no food like you know uh, if, well if you're worried about the morality of killing a hydra you don't need to worry about that like oh no it's, oh, it's no, like no, on the same level as titan spawn it. like it's it's bad no i'm i i'm i'm aware I'm, I'm okay killing a hydra i was wondering if i could do this to like convince it to stop fighting my friends for a few rounds <laughs> Like, uh, we are not food. Like, no food. No food. Bad food. Uh, if you want, you can kind of get off that, like, it, it, like, it is fearful of death. Like, it, it knows death is coming. Um, I will say you guys have done a shit ton of damage to this thing. Um, then, if you, and if you guys kind of focus right. here, you might be able to take it down before it sprouts right, then in, that, then in that case, I'll just roll. Okay, it sounds like damage is the best. Okay. All right, an attempt was made. All right. Um, <laughs> it's clever. And, like, you know, maybe for another fight, that'd be something cool you could do. Uh, but for this, kind of, it's, it is a dumb creature that, like, any so you're telling, any so you're intelligence telling me, at all that you're trying to give it, it just, it doesn't, it wouldn't know what to do. So you're telling me that if you had this power and made a mental connection with Genovia, you wouldn't be able to have. No. No. no that, that, that dog has a zero intelligence. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, rapier attack is uh, 16. 16 does hit. Hits. Just yes. barely, but it hits. Yes. The, another minimum damage of six. Excellent. Um, okay. Six, two in a row. Good job. Good job. All right. Um, I still get sneak attack because I have allies near this thing, right? I guess you have other combatants engaging it. Uh, so dopeness, yes. dopeness, dopeness. That's an extra 12 damage on top of that. Okay. And then a natural one of a 14. Nope, that's not a natural one. It's a 7. Sorry. 7 plus 7 is 14. Haha, it looks like a 1. Um, so don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. He yeah, has not right, told right. me the result of the roll yet. That is, that is true. Um, I have votes from last week, so I'm going to re-roll this. Okay. <laughs> uh, you also have your inspiration from the beginning of the game, if you'd like to use I that. I use that on initiative. Oh, okay. Alrighty. <laughs> you do uh, not so have that 14 your becomes a 23 on a re-roll from both. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That hits. Alright, so deal an extra 7 psychic damage on top of that. So minimum damage of six plus twelve is eighteen plus seven twenty-five? Yeah. Question mark? Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. twenty-five damage. Uh okay. And then were you attacking um body. The I actually the, bo so the body would, so specifically what I would like to do is using my hand, right? I'll actually kind of move my hand towards that big gash that you had kind of said was formed from the other creature. And mm -hmm. instead of forming like a blade, um, I'd like to flavor text that I'm actually using it as like a separator. Like the, the energy kind of like separates out. I want sure. to crack that open as much as I can. And then with the rapier, jab into uh, his body going for a vital organ. So we'll reverse so, jaws of life. Yes, essentially. Uh, so you said uh, twenty-five was the final damage number. Five. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and I had two head swipes. No, 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 no. Uh, that actually, it's. Uh, would you like to further describe? As uh, please describe the killing blow. Well, as I mentioned, I'm cracking open this wound, and it, you can hear bone and sinew crack with it, um, and exposed to the rib cage from this cre from whatever creature had hit the the hydra. I have now opened that up so much that I can actually see inside of its chest its beating heart. And I just take aim. Uh, my 
with my psychic hand inside of its body, and with one lunge, I scare Flynn. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, um, yeah. And then with one lunge, I run the uh, rapier, um, my magic. That word that you sent me that I can't look at right now from my, my computer. Um, I use that magical weapon to run through its heart, its exposed heart. Your rapier insistence? It's, it's called insistence. Yes. Uh, yeah. So as that uh, psychic uh, energy starts pulling apart the rib cage and just the extra smell that comes out of this body you know that this this hydra was dead long ago it was just you know it was a, it was a time bomb before it was going to finally expire you just keep ripping and the two the two heads that are left give out these mighty bellows as pain beyond pain that this creature is experiencing and your psychic uh, blades keep widening and widening and widening until finally you see kind of these black, you know, necrotic, decayed veins going to the central organ of its heart. And you're just able to reach all the way through with your rapier and pierce the main part of the heart. And as you remove the blade, just all the ichor and blood freely just starts gushing and gushing, quickly filling the body cavity of this creature. You quickly take many steps back as it immediately starts spilling out of it, turning the soil around you, killing the grass immediately, seeping into it. Nothing's going to grow here for a very long time. You actually see some of the bark start to immediately start peeling off of the trees as all this blood is poisoning the land right here. But the is that two normal for a hydra. We're gonna say it is. The two head. <laughs> I'm playing for texting, Stephen. I was two heads give out a final mighty bellow as they flop onto the ground, and the body kind of wiggles once or twice and falls onto the side. You have your the uh, the heroes of Elysian and friends have slain the hydra. Yeah. Oh, wow, there is. They came just in time to, for you all to slay a Hydra. Thank you to uh, Michelle uh, for rating and for the subscribing. Uh, we appreciate it very much. A uh, friend of the show right there. Thank you so much. You came just in time to hear our hero, Lamalthoon, backed up by his compatriots, yeah. slay a Hydra. Not a uh, unmighty feat for a group of uh, level six heroes hear that i'm the hero no no, no. That's, that's, hero. Nope, nope that no nope. as, as everyone i was hero. saying awesome. no that's hero <laughs> with those air quotes that, that's a stretch <laughs> but yes lamalthoon comes walking out of the woods completely covered in just gore and viscera and all the heads that have kind of fallen onto the ground kind of you know, mantles over the pasture uh, wooden fence, and you all meet up uh, on the village side of uh, the uh, the pens where the cattle were. All of the cows and things and sheep have kind of moved into one of the corners, all you know, terrified for their lives. Um, but you all uh, meet uh, just outside the village. The two archers that were helping you uh, kind of you know start working to gathering people back and uh you know getting people back in their homes letting them know the danger's over uh but you all kind of look at each other a shared victory one not one that not many heroes could say they walk away from relatively unscathed many of you having bite wounds or puncture wounds but no one having suffered a major injury uh and don't, we will go ahead don't worry none of this is my blood <laughs> and you on that just line can't. You just can't walk away from a fight without being drenched, can you? Honestly, this is a better look for you than normal. Yeah, that that's very true. And on those lines, we will take a quick 10-minute break. It is 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be back in 10 minutes at 11.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, to see what our heroes have to say about slaying the uh, doing the, the minor favor for Gar's friend Florian. Don't go anywhere.
Hello and welcome back. Our heroes have just successfully slain a Hydra and they all stand encircled around one of the many heads that they have felled. Heroes, I admire your work. I think given that I'm a bit further away, and that it managed to nick me. I'm assuming on the same arm I'm wearing my gauntlet on. Um, it can be whichever arm you'd like. I'm gonna say the same arm I got, I wear my gauntlet on because I usually try to defend with, you know, the the metal hand. Um, as I'm headed over to everybody else, I, I kind of turn away so they can't see it. And I'm gonna cast false life just to cause the skin to stretch and knit up uh, and for the, the fabric to close itself over with a temporary bond. All right. <clears throat> Who killed so, it? I believe wow. that honor is with Devok. Well done. Sorry. Or, well, well Malthus, excuse me. No, I'll, I'll I was go just with so. Credit. Yeah, I was just so. It was totally Devok. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was Devok. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I will accept your name. <laughs> it's a better name. It is a great name. I'm just saying. I'll use it in the summits. <laughs> what did oh, you yeah. find at the body? wounds not from us hmm. something bigger larger than the hydra this hydra was dead before we got here the reason why it had not taken over the village and eaten everything is that it probably couldn't even move its body was rotting away its heads just hadn't realized it yet did you exacerbate so, uh... this wound kind of look at everyone else. I mean, I'm not a dumb person, but that's fake. Did you make it worse? Yes. Did you leave the original damage intact to a degree which I can investigate it? <clears throat> well, <laughs> you see what had happened was... <laughs> yes or no, Lamaldum? I saw a tactical opportunity and took it, as you can tell. Um, I opened the wound a little bit more. Fine. Here. And they're going to fish out uh, three files from their uh, belt and then hand them over. Go. I want blood and venom. And then they're going to stoop over and they're going to find one of the heads that's a little more intact and just start pulling teeth. Okay. <clears throat> You can have any number of Hydra teeth you would like. I want a fucking there are ton enough, of Hydra teeth. There's enough heads here that Everybody, you, know, nice. you can have as much you can have as much Hydra teeth as you'd like. Beautiful. I would say Devok would request one. Sure. Yeah, anybody that wants any number of teeth, there's more. There, I, I ended up having what? Nine heads total, I think it ended up having. So all the Ooh. teeth in nine heads. Yeah. There's a lot of teeth. Um, and one of the oh please. Um Cyan is actually going to get down on one knee and a spot in the grass where some of the hydra's blood is pulled. She's going to run her fingers along it. And as she looks Malthoon in the eye, she's going to spread the blood across her cloven shield and say Van Gaal is very happy with this. <clears throat> is Van Gaal so, This is awkward. Okay, then. Uh, I'm going to take this tooth here, and he's just going to, like, grab it and snap it off. Um, it will be a nice souvenir. And a nice story to tell the ones back home. And he's going to put it in like a breast pocket. And he's uh, eventually going to get a twine of leather and make a necklace out of it. Okay. 
I'll I'll look back at Sayana. Um, uh, comment. Really, this wasn't simple slaughter or massacre. Doubtless, even like this was on his radar. You might be surprised. Seeker has a point. Every drop of blood that spills onto the earth is still a drop of blood nonetheless. Just as I'm working, I'm going to recall an old tale. Um, My grandfather was once the chosen of Angar. He wore the mark of the Hydra on his body. He would tell me the Hydra was Vangar's favorite creation, a creature that could shed blood to wound and be wounded eternally. So, if you'd like, you can consider it spitting in the god's face, the Malthun, or paying tribute, Sayana. Vangal probably wouldn't know the difference. Well, either way. Maybe one day I'll pull back And there'll be a true offering. Uh, Is anyone else interested in pieces of the Hydra? Uh... Yeah, I'll take a couple teeth just for the hell of it. Sure. You know, if any of you wanted some pieces of Hydra, I've seen plenty in the broad reach. I could have just, you know, brought you some. But this is one that we got ourselves. Remember. This is a mark of our accomplishments, both individual and together. I am just replacing what I spent on your arrows. And they were very and appreciated. That as well. Uh, Yune, um, specifically, you can make this roll. Give me another nature check. Alrighty. What number is that? Is that a zero or an eight? That is a zero. So, ten, so 17 total. 17 tall? Yes. Uh, You do know that there are two very useful organs of the Hydra. Uh, One being its lungs, and the other its heart, that have magical uh, and arcane properties that with the work of a master crafter or master enchanter could be used to make items of great renown if successfully harvested. I will gladly share this with the party. Would I know how to harvest them? Uh, Basically, I would allow uh, anyone to make a nature check to attempt to harvest these organs. Could I try with a medicine check? No, not the medicine check. Does you want to give it a try first? Oh, uh, sure. I've got a plus six in nature. How is everyone else? Uh, same. Well, if I had to watch. <laughs> can I assist? Sure. Uh... Yeah, the two of you can roll, or your assisting can give uh, Yune advantage on the roll. I'll do it that, do it like that. And he's just gonna get his axes out, and he, he <laughs> he's gonna follow Yune's orders. Like here, you need to cut here, okay. And then every once in a while, he's just gonna be like, okay, but this is where the blade needs to go. And it's like, oh well, we need to get it out here, but yes, but. You, you can't do that without doing this first. So he's going to just try and provide his point of view. So it is a really good thing that you gave me advantage because my first roll was an eight. Ooh. 
Yep, my okay. second roll was a 16. Hey. So add the six to that. 24? No, 22. 22. 22. <laughs> and for a second there, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> With a 22, we will say that you are able to successfully harvest one of the lungs and the heart. Hey, look, Wamalthu, and I look like you. And he's got blood <laughs> all over his arms and his axes. Uh, Patty, by the way. Yep. Question for you. These are vestiges we're using, right? Correct. Did anything happen during this fight with my axes? No. No. Okay. Uh, don't worry. Uh, you None of you will need to... The, the major events will happen for, the, for them to awaken. Okay, so we're not um, going to have to puzzle these out. No, 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 no. Okay, the okay. task will be set before you. Uh, yeah, so you have a lung and a heart, and you know, Yune, that the lung can be used uh, to make... It'll, it'll need to be worked on by a master uh, armor, armorer, which you happen to know one, uh, to make a helmet that can provide the ability to, of, of the wearer to breathe underwater, as the Hydra is a creature that also shares that ability. And by using its lung, the lining of its lungs, it gives, gives off uh, that magical ability. You know, the heart allows for a bit of the ability of the Hydra's regeneration. It would need to be worked on by a master uh, jewelry maker as well as master enchanter you know one of those people um and it would allow for regeneration properties i won't go into the specifics of it until you make it but uh, that's insane it would allow for some regenerative properties uh the the only problem you have is you need to figure out a way to keep these things preserved um as you know, once they start to decay and de decompose, they are of no use. Uh, um, would salt count? Because normally I would think Yune would have salt on them to be able to preserve meats. Preserve things. Potentially. Uh, I was thinking more of asking a favor of a wizard to like put it in a pocket dimension or something. Uh. That's um, yeah. That's the smart thing. Also, you got a spooky woo, Patty. Or uh, put it like in a uh, a spooky woo bag of holding or something like that. <laughs> Does anyone have I a have pocket dimension I could borrow? Spooky woo holding bags. Very Patty, chilly. you and I talked previously about preserving body parts. Uh, you have your own thing for preserving like humanoid. Body, mm. body parts and stuff. This would be a it just be just because of the size of this thing, uh, it'd be a bit outside of your scope. Okay. Because these are quite large uh, items. For right just now, imagining somebody a, carrying like a horrible flesh <laughs> beach ball back to the party. Also, like, I was gonna Look say, what I got. <laughs> well, yeah, essentially that's how it comes off is Devok and Yune walk back with like these horribly because you know, the whatever in infection uh, had, you know, altered these things a little bit so that, you know, they smell and, you know, they're both covered in just horrible, horrible bits of Hydra that they've chopped their way through. And so they do kind of just have these fleshy bits, uh, but you are, you would be able to, uh, you know, I'll say the, the villagers have extra like blankets you can wrap them up in and kind of tie them off and then put them on the uh, backs of your horses uh, and make your way back into the city if you're if there's nothing else you need you want to do here in the village all right i'm going with a speak now for everyone to peace thing so you uh make your way back to the city it is quite late um but the uh as you did inform the you know the guard that you would be leaving uh as you, you come back uh, they recognize you uh the process for them to open up the gates, but you are able to get in uh, and drop the horses back off at the stable that were kind of that was close to the uh, gates. Um, if you would like, we'll, we can say that you can uh, drop off your hydra parts 
uh, over at um, Idalia's and maybe convince her to work on at least the uh, the helmet. Um, and then you can figure out what to do with the heart later. Yeah, um, Dabak is, is very specifically going to like haul this thing over his shoulder and throw it down and it's going to slap and the air that was captured in the lung is just going to go... <laughs> and he's going, it's very and much he's, like a whoopee cushion it's just like like, like a deflated whoopee cushion he's gonna, and he's going to look at her very seriously and go I know this is a little spooky woo but I need you to make a helmet out of this please thank you <clears throat> uh, Adalia wouldn't be there at this time of night um, but we'll say that you can talk to her tomorrow morning uh, you all are, can uh, go back uh, to the uh, to dragon uh, if, unless there's anything else any of you would like to do. Um, the way I've been thinking about uh, my, my, my thing is probably sneaking out once a month or so in order to go do it where nobody is around me. I imagine that might be harder in a walled city. Um, uh, yeah, you'd probably need to uh, slink outside of the city walls. Then to that end, I just I would not go back when everybody else did. I would, okay. you know, make up some bullshit about wanting to show the villagers how to organize their defenses or something, and then fuck off into the woods alone. Okay, so everyone else is able to go back to the sleeping dragon. Uh, I assume you're all just ready to go to sleep after having had mortal combat with a hydra uh, unless there's anything anybody wants to do before they go to bed uh minus uh birdie we'll talk about that in a second uh no i'm ready to go get 22 points of healing that'd be great there you go yeah <laughs> hey, i <laughs> yes. was gonna say I, I i'm perfectly fine to heal everyone up for uh you would not you, you don't have to we'll say that you all of you will be getting a long rest here, so you don't need to be worried about expending any spell slots or anything like that. I don't know. It sounds like you really want to press this story forward. I kind of want to... <laughs> kind of fuck around a little bit more. I kind of want to fuck around just a little Go bit. Go poke some holes, find some NPCs <laughs> that need some help. Is, is there a job board here? A quest board, maybe? I did legitimately... I, I, I had a thought where I was like, man, I could ask a question right now that's going to drag this out for like three more sessions, probably. Go for it. Ask the question. So I would like to go back to the dragon. And they're, they're, the, they're the center of like information trade, right? Uh, they're, they're the least the friendliest. They're and yeah, they're, they're the ones you're you know closest with. If they don't have the information, they'd at least be able to point you in the right direction. So we found it. So I'll go up to like the madam or someone, the one that was really nice to us. Yeah, Colette, yeah. Right. Um, oh, you know what? She's not going to help me. Okay. All right. I'm going to be like, so we found out a piece of information. I was just curious if you could help me with something. Well, it turns out that there are additional people going on in the same trek that we are beyond what we were initially oh you heard many of these other adventures come through here looking for an evening to any of your employees no we don't have none of them have come to us um and not not neither us nor any of the other establishments we run throughout the city Sense motive. Sure. Insight. Or insight, yes. Um, old terminology could me back in. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that happened. Um, okay. Uh, insight because I'm assuming... Like, okay. So. Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, natural one for a 10. Okay. Uh, me. From what she can read off her... Um, she is a guarded person in general, but right. she's been open and honest with your group so far, so it seems like she's telling the truth. Right. I 
absolutely no other adventures are going to be any of those happenings. Is there anywhere else in the school to <laughs> go? Just point me in a direction. Uh, well, it's hard to, without knowing who these people are. Uh, if they're, well, you know, that they're freelancers, they could be working or, or they could be working with a group. They could be working with the scaled or any of the number the, of arcane societies let's put it this all way. have their own safe houses. Let's put it this way. If we are the heroes of the town that we are Elysian. from. Elysian. Elysian. <laughs> We are the heroes you're a very bad hero to forget where you're from. And friends. I, I don't know about that. I think may, maybe they're just the heroes of releasing you now. I didn't do shit for your city. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone else of this stature or... Fame and notoriety come to town. He was not here a month ago. Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. We only know of the three that you were originally told of. The, of course, Verduke is sending a squadron of Black Dragoons. Uh, and I believe you met. Acadia, the mirror mage, she has her own group, and then the third group that the other the, the third group that we know about uh, is um, a small squadron of uh, hollow legionnaires have been commissioned. But that would you, make you, you, three others, yes, you and three others. But you said that the king had said there were three others, but when we talked to Idalia there were or who I forget who I forgot who who I have slipped to you that there were five both Idalia and Zamu told us okay uh we there's there's five others we do not have information on these other two groups we had none of the Hollow Legionnaire group before did we you hadn't really got any details on any of the groups um because none of you had asked yet uh but the three that they give that that they know that that they can give you information on is the group of black dragoons, uh, Acadia, and then yeah, there's a group of hollow legionnaires. What are hollow legionnaires? Congregate. Are the hollow legionnaires? Sorry, what was the question again? Um, if we're all there, then I would just kind of turn to you and just go, where do your fellow legionnaires congregate in the evening? I would love to know where a hollow legionnaire hotspot is. Mm, we do not need to eat. We do not need to sleep. Um, whatever business they need to take care of is probably what they're attending to. So no tavern for the legionnaire? No. It's no use unless it's we need it to get information. Nothing fun, nothing interesting, no liveliness, nowhere you go in the evening to blow off steam. No, we don't blow off steam, we don't have steam inside of us to blow off. <laughs> kind of look through some of the cracks in the armor just trying to see what's kind of inside <laughs> fucking purple something's floating around in there it's my body <laughs> very well <laughs> oh god <laughs> when does it end <laughs> Then it appears a dead end on the Legionnaires. They could be anywhere doing anything except having fun. (laughs) 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 
be fair, for the most part, they are like a step above robots. Like I know, I know. <laughs> they are very purpose driven. Sayana is like an oddity among <laughs> Holly Jenners. Oh. I'm assuming the Black ju- Lagoon. Oh, God damn <laughs> the Black Lagoon. The creatures of the Black Lagoon. The creatures of the Black. Okay. We found I'm out the, party. the Black. I'm assuming the Black Dragoons are in the barracks doing drills. <laughs> doing Dragoon shit. <laughs> doing Dragoon bullshit. Dragoons do do Dragoon bullshit. I'm just saying. I mean, just Dragooning it up. Say that three times fast. <laughs> Dragoons do dragoon bullshit. Dragoons do dragoon bullshit. And unfortunately, Pazat stayed behind to help farmers with defenses, I swear. And why is that a bad thing? (laughs) Because the third party is their ex. How did you find that out? Yeah, that's... that's, that's... No, oh, that's, that's player information. Yeah, that's I player apologize. Did I miss it? No, I, okay, I'm so sorry. Then yeah, I'll take that back. Um, I misremembered. Sorry. That okay. is an outrageous didn't, assumption, Lamal. How didn't, 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 didn't dare track you? Track that. Didn't track that. Okay. Well, this mirror mage. I mean, we did interact with her slightly before. Um, they do seem to know each other. Well, it's neither here nor there. Unworthy. Do you not want to get an idea? Do you not want to get a drop or an idea or interact with or sabotage any of these other groups before we leave? I honestly don't give two shits about the other groups. Damn, mouth kind of an asshole. Sabotage? <laughs> Are these not our opposition? No, you were told you were working together. Yeah, there are friendlies. There, uh, Ver- Duke was like Excuse work together. Me. We're working Excuse together with the. They, okay, uh, let's be fair here. There is a dynamic here. There is a competitive dynamic here where the last person, or the first person that gets there, gets the candy, gets the prize. Okay, like we're working together. Well, technically, you've all only one person to, get like, just scout it out and then report back to Verduke. So technically, you're all supposed to give the prize to Verduke, no matter who figures out what the prize is. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. Technically. Yeah. technically. technically. I mean, I was assuming yeah. only one group uh-huh. would be rewarded, though. Now, now, hold on a second. Le Malthoon was very open and honest right to Verduke's face. Um. Yeah, that was the thing that happened. You know? If if we get this, um, I just want okay. So if we're back in character, just very quickly, and you guys are saying you don't want to sabotage the other group, just be like, might I remind everybody? I'll kind of say this low so that you know, hopefully this isn't like I'm trying to specifically not leak it to the world. Sure, I can remind everybody that what we're after is. To- Supposedly something that can fundamentally change existence. The rumors of wish fulfillment to a massive scale. Do you really not want to take every opportunity to get there first? Duvak. Not want I something. want... <sighs> There are a thousand things in this lifetime that I wish I could have done differently. Yeah, I have a lifetime of regrets. My thought process on this entire thing is the more time we fuck around here, the more time they have to just jump ahead of us. Like, here's my thought. My thought is, and if we're going to kind of hash out this timeline right now, Mm. there are probably one or two groups ahead of us. There are probably one or two groups behind us. That puts us right in the middle. The longer we fuck around here, the more of the two groups ahead of us are just going to get farther ahead. 
again, we don't have this information specifically, but I was under the impression you were all leaving together once the navigator was brought in. Remember, we are all meeting up with this navigator mm. tomorrow, correct? I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some have scattered ahead. You might be right. We and I have not considered that. My assumption was we were all going to go off together. It's a support group. A network of friends, of acquaintances and allies who don't know each other. All looking for literally the most powerful artifact ever heard of. So you know what, Devark, you are right. I apologize. Oh, Best course and... of action right here, right now, is to go have a good night's sleep and a hearty breakfast. Okay, I was going to say something that would bring us together and unify us, but as usual, that's not going to happen. All right. <laughs> It was, a good, it, was a, it was a great, great thought, though. That's awesome. I was actually going to commend you on your thinking that it's quite possible that we should at least know who we're dealing with. And so that information I would be very used to. But if we're going to be petty, then by all means... I'm not sure where to go, unfortunately. We don't have very much information on them. But I'd love to find us one of those groups. Good choice. Maybe we should ask around. None of them seem to be here in the tavern. Maybe they are elsewhere in town. Maybe. To the GM! Is there anywhere that we can go to start looking into the possibility of any of these groups that we know about? Just to kind of get an idea of who they are and what they do. You would have no idea where to start in this giant capital city. Like, your source of information doesn't have any leads. And, like, sure, you could barge into random taverns and random things like that. Like, you're looking for a needle in the haystack here. So, on to that, though, Gar wants to meet up with Florian for partly a little bit of that reason. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, if, if Florian would have definitely have told you like where their residence is in case you changed your mind and wanted to catch up or hang out or anything like that. So you can definitely uh, make make your way to their uh, house. So yeah, they, they, they greet they greet you at the door, invite you in, uh, both sitting at the table. So Florian, uh, that little favor you asked of me oh you went you did go and check it out then I, I pull out some of the teeth and i toss them on the table and i say i never thought a hydra was little oh uh i assure it's dead. you it's dead well i appreciate that i assure you uh i definitely did not know it was going to be something quite as fearsome as that um it it, it I, kind of was um, a little surprising for us too. Yeah. Uh, yes, I mean we're fine. It was good, but good. Uh, since um, it was a little bit uh, more than we expected, can I just ask a little favor of you? you uh, uh, of course, for, of course. If you, if you, if, you if, I, if I can give you it, I will give you it. You, you said you're now in a higher position. The Black Dragon's army. Uh, you happen to know anything about uh, some of these groups that are going on this mission? Until you told me about it, I had not heard about this. Um, this does sound like the latest in the King's long, long, long line of pet projects to find a higher power of some sort. Um, but as far as hiring all this outside help and sending them on some damn crusade, no, I had not. I didn't even know this was going on. This is something he's must have kept secret from just about everyone. Uh, it's true that you know 
the military talks and but i not even from not anybody have i heard even a whisper of this so he must not be telling any of his generals about this plan anyway which is not which is not completely unusual to say I, he as much as he leans on his generals to keep the hegemony in order he also does not trust them well the same can be said for uh, us with these groups that we are supposed to be working with i want to make sure that we don't have to look to see the dagger put in our backs by any of them before it happens would you happen to be able to pull some threads and see if you might find ones that we might have to watch for like i said i i, I don't know of any of these groups i don't know of any of these people but i would know that if the king is assembling as many groups as there are, as many different peoples from many different walks of life there are, he would not have it, especially if this is something he wants as badly as it seems he wants. He would definitely have things in play to make sure that it does not just immediately implode and die to infighting. He would... There is going to be some sort of insurance policy where one group cannot just outrightly destroy the others. So while I'm not saying you can trust all of the other groups, I am saying that you can trust that there will be something in play where you will not have to sleep with one eye open, at least not for the beginning of your journey. Fair enough. Well, since I'm here, friend, might as well uh, have one more drink before we spread separate ways one more or once again. And I pull out some of my dwarven ale for him. Uh, he actually he uh, uh, they surprise you and actually pull out um, a very small like pony keg of uh, uh, Kelder dwarven ale, which like to get that in the hegemony is like unheard of, and they're just like. I may have uh, acquired this from the latest supply chain that we disrupted for, of the Kelder Dwarves. And while I do not necessarily agree with this Cold War we have with them, uh, I can at least make sure things are not smashed to pieces and no one gets to enjoy it. Indeed. I mean... S just because you have a hard time with them doesn't mean you have a hard time with the, uh, I gesture to the bottle or the keg, their products. Exactly. Uh, so one beer is poured, however many ones you would like to have, you can have, uh, it will not affect your long, you may, you can still get the full benefit of your long yeah. rest. I, I uh, just it just depends whether or not you him. would go back to the sleeping dragon or stay at Florian's. Probably staying at Florian's, but I was going to finish it off and uh, say, so let's put this, toss the I'm a Hydra Tooth spooky woo behind us. Down it in one go. Excellent. Okay. The rest of you fine heroes fall into the warm embrace of sleep and have pleasant, for the most part, dreams, or no dreams at all, if you're drunk like Gareth. Except for Pajat, who is out in the woods of that village, past the fallen Hydra body, into a small clearing in the middle. And a ritual is started. Please describe what this ritual looks like. first time they did it they had to improvise but by now they've developed a very practiced route they took the pannier that they usually have psionic carry with the spare bones back and over the course of an hour as the new moon rose overhead totally blacked out by the planet uh, they lined the clearing like they're making a clock uh, with bones 
except in the place of each of the numbers is another letter in a sentence that wraps in on itself again and again in the dead language of the Titans. And then at its center, they stand and they doff their creepy uh, Gorgon's paw. And then right as it goes overhead, they're pointing their hand up and the new moon crests and the hour is right. And their arm with all these weird scars up it kind of starts to pulsate and the blood seems to creep to the surface. And there are a hundred little markings like tiny hands that seem to wrap around and grab. And then all one at a time, the fingers let loose and snake off. They point out to the various letters of this arcane circle. And there's just a vertical column of shadow between the circle on the ground and the moon overhead. And they stand in perfect blackness. And in that blackness, in that silence, a voice speaks to them. The voice does speak. And you doffed the gauntlet. It just floats right there, right at eye level in front of you. And each piece of each of your magical items or armor or arms slowly comes off of you and floats at eye level around you, orbiting you as you are the sun in this solar system of magic. Any spells you might have written down, any spell books, anything that has been imbued with magic at all just starts to float up from the ground, all orbiting you. And the voice seems to come from these magic items. You summon me again. This is not wise. There is no need to summon you, for you are always with me. I merely wish to speak. Perhaps you are smarter than I give you credit for. You need to remember, though, you are just another being I can destroy. I have born in cold more civilizations than there are stars in the skies. You humanoids are but my toys. Why may no longer have a physical form? I am everywhere. I am the veil. I am the arcane. I am the weave. I am Mesos. They're shaking. Like they're shaking every time they do this. But they still say their piece as they have to. And I am they that bends the weave to their will. I may be but a lowly beast. You are only the greatest beast that ever lived. And now you live no more. Thus, we have our accord. What is it you need to give me the power I seek? I have set your path from birth. Every event, everything you have done has led you to this group, to this king, to this quest. You will find this floating isle the black dragon so deserves at once. You will go there and claim it for me. You need to start shaping your dreams. Every night you are to dream, to waking dream, to imagine, to picture, to want more than anything in this entire world. My 
return. For those who dream of my return are rewarded. The king thinks he can bring about peace. He is a fool. Your friends, your tools, think they can shape this for their own needs. They are fools. This boon, this bit of power of my kin that still exists in your world exists for one purpose, my purpose. You may have shaped this world since its conception. You may be the blood that flows through the veins of magic itself, but I am an anatomist, and my dreams and my thoughts are the world that I control, Mesos. You will give me your paltry power to add to my own. I will do as you ask while it suits me to do so. Not to think yourself the one in control, Seeker. I remember the gifts I give can be returned. And what I take back, I take back tenfold. You think it is just Power I give. Do you not know what happens when those who use the weave so freely make a mistake? Be prepared for many mistakes if you do not do as I command. I am magic. I Flames, I am Mesos. And as that last trailing of the S falls off, all of the magical items that you have are all almost vibrating in their orbit around you violently. And then all of a sudden they fall to the ground with all heavier than they should, leaving indentions into the ground. The column of shadow that had been wrapped around you is shot off into the sky like a, like a cannon shot. And you see it actually almost seems to cover where the new moon is. And then the sounds of the woods rush back into you. And you are alone once again. alone in the spooky wheel. You are nothing but the bitterest and oldest of bitter old fools. Fine. Fine. Your cursed dead dreams. I will carry them for now. And then carefully, so as not to leave any trace of this ritual, you brush over the runes, you gather all the items, every single bone that was placed. You even uh, use some of your powers to fell some trees to fall in the area, looking as if though the Hydra had rampaged through here. No one would be able to tell a titan was summoned here. You were able to make your way back into the city and slip into the sleeping dragon. As you too fall to sleep, your dreams are of an island and an ocean and a laugh, a horrible, terrible laugh. You all wake up the next morning, fully rested. 
come down to the Sleeping Dragon. Gareth joins you 30 minutes later, having walked back from Florian's pace. <clears throat> you are able to convene and talk about what quick things you might need to get done before you are to meet at the lair where you were instructed to go to. I think this following morning is the only time in your life you've seen Seeker Pajat distracted. Just staring off at a wall or something during the mid-morning conversation. Seeker Pujat, are you are you okay? I am thinking. Oh. I I apologize. I, I hope that whatever thoughts are plaguing you that they don't plague you much longer. <laughs> Devok, we have to take you to see Zalmuth. The rest of us, we have to return to the alley. I will pick up your armor for you. Speak not of my thoughts, Yene. Your sympathies, they do not help. Well, if you ever want to talk about it, I'm here. Ugh. If you ever want to brood silently about it, I'm here. Then remain there, and I will do so. Devok just kind of nods. All right, well, this this is a morning. <laughs> the atmosphere at the table uh, seems a bit tense. Gar, Gar will have seen if he could get a little bit of that uh, ale so that he can make sure that Duvok gets a taste of it because yeah, no, oh, good lad. I I want to tear a piece. Good of looking out. Bread. Um, I want to tear a piece of breakfast bread and just be like, so we're not going to acknowledge that really ominous chuckle from. Did we acknowledge it when you did it? I mean, we're each trying to support, or at least I'm trying to support our group. As, as long as you guys don't kill unnecessarily you all have your own nefarious subplot says lamel thune always lets everyone know nefarious um, subplot i mean i have a subplot okay. nefarious well, is stretching it well, a bit well duvok we already we already talked about our pasts and why you know we are like this, so I already know you're fine, hundred percent through and through. Right, I still. And I mean, Yene, Yene is great too, but I mean, uh, let's face it. D did you have half to... of our half of our group has nefarious, you know, little things that they do in their free time? I know it. I'm not dumb. We all know it. I know it. You know it. We all know it. I guess I look at Seeker and so I guess I look at Seeker and uh, Sayan. I go, how the hell did I get lumped in with you two? Your <laughs> name will slap him upside the head gently. Love it's that. better to end up with me than on my axe, cut in half. <sighs> That's a good point. I would also not like to be cut with his axe. Looks over at Seeker. Shall we go now? This morning we is please. becoming a bit tense. Oh, the party oh. dynamic. As as uh, for ending this scene, I just kind of want to take my again my piece of breakfast bread and to Sayana, just rip the bread in half. <laughs> 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 so uh, well, oh sorry no uh does anyone else i i know uh seeker kind of aggressively was like 
Devok, and then the rest of you can just meet me. But does it does anyone want to go try to go with them or uh, do anything else? Uh, you kind of are on a time crunch. Um, you know, it was implied to uh, you know earlyish morning uh, go back to the lair. So uh, it, it, there's not much you can accomplish here. Who's going to pick? Did you say uh, Seeker is going to pick up like the stuff from? Uh, I don't remember the armor. Uh, Adalia, yes. Adalia, I will go to help, considering that Seeker is small by comparison. <laughs> yes, it, it, and it, it there is might be heavy you. amounts of stuff. It's two shields, a gauntlet, and some armor. So, just it, out it, of curiosity, how tall are you? My character's about six foot. Okay, I got three inches on you. Yeah, but you never fight, and you always walk away from things, so you never have actually shown you being strong. Point. I prefer to let others do the carrying. If you're going to volunteer, I'm not going to turn it down. Sayana will follow as well. Very well. All right, we'll just say all of you will go along on this journey then. Uh, you make your way back to Inferno Alley. Once again, ridiculously hot. Um, Is it hot enough to dinner. disco? Uh, you don't want to disco because you might uh, you might go down in a disco inferno. <laughs> um, it ain't no country club neither. <laughs> uh, you get to Idalia's um, shop, and uh, sure enough, just kind of at the front of the store uh, is the armor on a on a dummy, uh, and then the two shields and a gauntlet kind of resting on a table next to it. And uh, she sees you all approaching and kind of, you know, just still uh, is kind of babying and nursing something in the furnace. And she kind of shouts over the, the, the roar of her furnace. That's yours. Be gone. Mm. <laughs> Devok doesn't waste any time. He just mm, <laughs> grabs, grabs his armor. Do, do you want to put it on here, or like you're just going to carry it with you? It's up to you. She seems busy. I'm not going to fuck with well, her. Well, like, <laughs> like, if you were to put on your armor here, like, it's not going to bother her. Like, as long as you're like sta not standing right next to her and putting it on, like, it's not going to bother her if you wanted to put on your armor right here. Bar standing yeah. in full plate will be looking at Duvok getting dressed like it's hot as hell. I'm wearing full plates. I want to hurry it up too, man. All right. Well, you can take off. I'm taking off mine. <laughs> oh, we, uh, we why the... do you always strip in front of me? We have the because hydro. Because it's a good time. You know that. Yes. So uh, you kind of like roll the sack that you kind of like put behind like one of the the you know the stalls or something. And just kind of like, as you're rolling it out, she looks at it. Good things for you. Puts the thing back in, walks, it, like shuts the, the, the fire so it's not roaring. Comes over so she can speak in her voice. And what is in the bag? Dead things. Dead things do not interest me. Oh, oh, what, oh. Uh, hide your heart and lung. She cocks her head. Oh. Well. And she opens up the bag and pulls out the uh, the lung. She's like, I can work with this. I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna lean down to Yane and whisper in their ear, you may want to offer this as a gift. Medalia has complained to no end about not receiving any thanks for all this hard work. And you could do worse than making friends with the best smith in the hegemony. Ine will uh, respond um, quietly. Uh, that, that's kind of what I was thinking, as long as it's all right with everyone else. Never else. Tap, tap. <laughs> Uh, she takes the lung and goes uh, on the opposite side of her kind of shop area from where the furnace is and digs a hole in the ground um, and then puts the lung in it and then buries it. And she kind of looks at you guys and she's like, it'll keep it fresh longer. I can't work on it right now. 
And she, oh, then no, she goes that, back that's over. That's smart. And then she goes back and she, she's like, the heart, I, I don't have any use for. Uh, Do you know someone who would? Well, uh, there's some properties of the heart that could be used. Uh, if you From what like, I understand, can... a, a helmet? Well, uh, that's what I'm going to make with the lung. The heart is going to have to be imbued and the properties taken out. I, I could give it to Zalmuth. Uh, we, he could work on it. It will take an amount of time. I do not know how busy he is. We are but... going to see Zalmuth anyway. Adalia. If you're going to go see him, then by all means, see him. Oh, I, please. Oh, uh, when Adalia is not really paying attention, maybe when she was burying the lung, um, Yine will have asked everyone in the party if they're all right with gifting the lung to Adalia. Sayana would wholeheartedly agree. I have no objections. After Devok gets like, I'm assuming this is all happening while he's getting undressed. Yes. So he's he's getting like uh, his 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 boot on. And he's doing that jump up and down, trying to grab the back of it. You know, and he's like, oh, it's fine by me. And, and like everything, I'm assuming fits to exquisite properties. And yes, like, she's worth. Her it work is, is worth fit. every single penny we could give her. You got it for uh, free. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's the thing. Is it, it was free. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, like, I, I see no reason why not to. So she comes I don't back need over. need it for hyperventilating, so we're good. Uh, she she comes back over uh, after having buried it and is talking to and, you know, talks to you about the heart. Uh, and as you guys are kind of you know, leaving. She does turn, she does kind of turn back around. She's like, thank you. This is a rare component. It's and then goes back over to the fire, do. opens it, and like the roar of the rushing air comes out of it. Daddy, trying on my gauntlet. Said, Thanks. Is it dope as hell? <laughs> it is dope as hell. Um, so yeah, so uh, the the items that she made for all of you. Uh, Gar, your shield um, is a little bit bigger than the buckler you used to, um, but you are able to, uh, uh, as an action, you can set it in the ground and activate it, and it, act, it can act as a half cover for up to two people. Oh, that's as good. it plants into the ground and kind of extends out. It'll, it'll act as half cover good. for two people. Please. Uh, Sayana, your shield. Um, it is, uh, she just, it was it is so well made and imbued uh, that it is a uh, plus three shield as opposed to a plus two shield. Uh, Devok, your armor is, uh, a, it, for mechanical purposes, it is a breastplate. Uh, medium armor um, and uh, it allows um, for uh, no it has no uh, stealth penalties to it uh, as well as um, uh, you can uh, once uh, once per a day you can uh, force a crit against you to be re-rolled. Oh shit! So uh, it and then eighteen. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. It's it's the same. Uh, whatever a breastplate is, whatever the normal AC for a breastplate is, um, but uh, it has that additional property. Uh, and then uh, seeker, your gauntlet. Um, it provides another. Uh, point of AC for you. Um, Thank fucking God. As well as the, I, I know you don't, you're not a melee person, but it, it has the melee properties of a claw gauntlet. Oh, I will be. Uh, 
oh, okay, well then there you go. It has the melee properties of a claw gauntlet, uh, and it's it's so light and agile uh, that you can use your um, uh, you can add your uh, ability modifier to it as uh, for on your bonus action on your bonus action attacks uh, as you are not, normally not supposed to. You can with this gauntlet. Beautiful. On the way out, just feeling like how perfectly balanced the two are, um, Seeker's going to steeple the claw fingers together and then look to Lamalthun and say, you know, if you were as wise as Yene, you would stay in this town and court to Dahlia. You're not going to find better. Certainly not on your quest. I'm kind of taken back. I just like, I was unaware I was looking for a life partner. Maybe you should have been looking. You might have seen those arms. <laughs> they are fucking. And armor, of course. They are fucking jacked. Arms and armor. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, I'm looking at the spear on the. <laughs> oh, are you now? <laughs> the spear, huh? <laughs> um. <clears throat> to Zeus. <laughs> She could, she could make some of those. Uh, so yeah, okay. So yeah, you make a quick stop to Zalmuth. Um, we can just kind of, uh, we don't have to super role play it out, but um, you can drop off the Hydra Heart. And he says he'll work on it. Um, was there anything else you wanted to do with him or did you just want to drop off the heart? Devok was due an appointment with the Chamber of Nonsense items. Oh, that's right. You didn't get a magical item. That's right. Uh, yeah, so you, as you guys are kind of dropping off the heart and like, hey, uh, you know, can you make a thingy for us? Duvok, you are, uh, <laughs> you are, uh, uh, walk down to this, uh, think, uh, Ariel's Grotto from The Little Mermaid, how it's just kind of this cylindrical room that goes very far up, and there are many, many, many alcoves with things in them. Um, and, uh, uh, you may attempt to, uh, if you'd like, you can leave it up to me and I'll roll for it, or you can, you know, quickly look at the magical items and see if you can convince me that that should be something you can get. I had an actual idea. Okay. What already. Is it? Um, and I can't remember what it's called, but there is a ring that provides additional spell slots. Uh, so that item has already been taken. <laughs> that is a ring of spell storing, and Cyana Cyana has one of those. Fair, that's fair. Um, let's see, he's got hand axes. Uh, you know what? Let's let's leave it up to chance. I can't think of anything I'd immediately want right now. Okay. Other than the Hell ability yeah. to teleport, so let's let's leave it up to chance. Chance it is. <laughs> I love chance. Uh, chance. Just to just, just to just because it is the end of the session, I will uh, I'll I'll roll. I'll tell you what it is uh, after the session if that's okay. Fair. All right. So uh, Devok walks back up. Uh, plus one magical item. Uh, Zamuth wishes you. Uh, luck and guides you to the part of the lair where you are supposed to uh, meet up, you are summoned to. Uh, you walk into a fairly large room uh, that is mainly empty except for the exact center of the room it has a large uh, stone kind of, uh, there's a couple steps up uh, and it is a stone uh, square in the ground and engraved into that square uh, is a runic circle. Uh, and all the other arcane users immediately recognize this as a teleportation circle. Oh, great. Uh, Zalmuth kind of bows, exits, uh, and coming kind of out of the shadows from the side of where the te teleportation circle is, uh, is King Verduke. Hello, it is. It is good to see all of you. I'm glad. Uh, you were able to make it on time. Uh, I heard you all had a bit of an encounter. 
last night at Komodo. I appreciate the service you've done for the hegemony by slaying the Hydra. Uh, I can assure you, I none of my sources knew that that was lurking there, but uh, I guess I'll just add it to your tab for things I owe you, hopefully, once you return back from this mission. And he kind of looks over all of you, make, you know, look, and you can tell he's looking to see if any of you were hurt or injured. And he's just like, glad to see that you were all in one piece. You can uh, probably still see the gash. I didn't have time to stitch my cloak back up. So there's a, a couple of teeth marks across, but I'm wearing an extra layer of cloth under to cover my arm. Gotcha. Uh, he's kind of, you know, kind of this awkward pause of, you know, Sorry, you had to fight a Hydra. He's like, <laughs> I, I, I apologize. Uh, Queen Galita would have liked to have seen you all off as well. She's not feeling well, um, but uh, that is not of your concern. Uh, are you ready to leave? Let us be done with the city. Ready as we'll ever be. Oh. Any motions to the teleportation circle? Please. The vocal I, step forward. And uh, I guess there's no point in keeping secrets anymore as it's time for you to leave. You will be going to Rahak, the port city. Perhaps the crown jewel of the hegemony. And it's from there you will embark upon your quest to find the floating isle. For a second there, there's just this moment where uh, Seeker gets the white knuckle grip on the staff again. Right when Verduk says, no use in keeping secrets anymore. And they're obviously thinking about those two extra parties. And so yeah. wordlessly staring at him the whole time, they back up onto the teleportation circle. And they're doing their due diligence, imagining him being picked up and plucked apart by all the powers of magic in the world. <laughs> you have to daydream uh, about these things. As you uh, as you cross the, uh, the sigils on the ground for the teleportation circle, Seeker, um, unbeknownst to your friends, just one of this like a bit of black smoke comes off one of the sigils and just wraps its way around and wraps around your wrist. And in Titan speech, it just says, dream. And then the smoke kind of fades away. You all stand in the middle of the circle. Devok, or uh, not Devok, Verduk uh, is kind of just standing there, hands clasped behind his back, biggest smile on his face. He's just like, you want to take a great journey. It will benefit not just the hegemony, but all of Gelsbad and perhaps all of Skarn. Uh, I cannot tell you how happy and how proud I am that you undertake this. I do not know how long you will be gone and I do not know where exactly you'll be going, but I can only hope that the next time I hear from any of you, it will be good news. And he kind of does a little hand signal to, uh, there, there's a mage wearing uh, the colors of the layer who steps forward and uh, starts uh, casting the spell of teleportation circle, which I believe takes a minute. So if there's anything in a minute, you all do. Otherwise, it's just the weird, uh, I just awkward stare. At the very stare. end, want to just say, don't worry, we'll be the best out of all six groups. Yeah, it is, it is a minute. So like mm -hmm. second 59, you lay that zinger on him. And as you kind of the green energy coming up from each sigil in sequence along the circle starts to come up and wrap itself around all of you. And as this swirling, twirling kind of dervish of energy is engulfs all of you and then starts to narrow and starts to disappear, all you can see is just Verduke's face and a large smile as... <laughs> The energy envelops you. And you reappear on a similar looking teleportation circle. 
inside of a small room. There is a mage waiting there, also wearing the colors of the lair. They open the door that leads directly outside. And immediately you are blinded by the sunlight. It is a very bright day. The smell of salt washes across you. The crying of gulls and other uh, ocean birds fill your ears. There's the sound of busy, uh, in busy streets, people hustling and bustling. And as your eyes adjust to the light, you realize you are up above and you look down upon the port part of Rahash, Rahak. And down below you see seven boats all flying the colors of the hegemony. Well, fuck, there's one more. Wait, wait. And as, you, wait. as, you're, t oh. as you're taking everything in, oh. taking all this sight in, a voice comes from next to you, next to the building you just walked out of. Well, it seems our last group is here. You turn and look at the individual. One ram-style horn with numerous cracks in it comes out of their head. One of their arms is bright blue with scales that ripple in time with his breathing. He has one cloven foot leg and what appears to be no second leg, yet he stands upright. And the point of a tiefling-like tail comes out and wraps around his leg. I am the navigator. And that's what we'll end for the night. Hmm. Oh, damn. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> All righty. It has been a pleasure telling the story to you, listener. We hope you enjoyed what you saw and heard as much as we enjoyed performing it for you. I'd like to once again thank Onyx Path Publishing, Astral Tabletop, and Vin Sweat. A special shout out goes to all of our Patreon subscribers, Twitch subscribers, and to you, our lovely audience, for joining us and going on this wonderful trip through the Scarred Lands. Don't forget to follow and subscribe on Twitch. Remember, you can always use your free sub you get with Amazon. And check out our works on GM's Guild and Drive Through RPG. Get some bodacious merch on our merch store. Join our Discord to become part of the best community on the internet. Check out VorpalTales.com, where you can get all the links to our sponsors. And finally, just, you know, be good to one another. Let's hear from our players once again. Your name, handle, character, and where people can find you outside of Vorpal Tales. Hello, everybody. I am Steve. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. I've had to play Blue Malfoon, and you can... Usually find me on Sundays doing some sort of horror-based gaming, uh, but I don't know if we're doing that this Sunday. I'm gonna go hang out with some cool gamer friends. Uh, s Sunday is we are having the fiasco game still, but Colt is not running. Correct. Only yes, yeah, Sunday yes. only is going to have fiasco. Yes. So. I will be in a different state than my normal home state having fun with people. And yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of people to have fun with, I will be there having fun with people as well. Um, so I guess next week on um, Thursday, uh, here, right here at Vorpal Tales is where you're going to find me. And uh, I have been Devok, otherwise known as J3 Million. I will be here next week. My name is Birdie, she, her pronouns. I have been playing Seeker Pajat and I had a whole hell of a lot of fun tonight. So I hope I get to see y'all at the next one. Hey guys, it's me, Kames. Tonight I played Sayana, um, the Hollow Legionnaire Death Cleric. I will be back here with Birdie next Friday um, doing some shenanigans. So I'll see you then. I love shenanigans. We're gonna yeah. have so much fun. 
Hey everybody, I've enjoyed playing Yane for you, and I am once again Ambrose. You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, because it me, Am Changeling. You can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. I make stickers. You can stick them on yourself, you can stick them on your stuff, you can stick them on people that aren't aware, but uh, don't okay. get caught. I did not endorse this message. Yes, you didn't, because consent is important, right? Yes, consent's important. Uh, hello all, I have been Gar, and uh, as Tony said, I have been good. Uh, I am Devin, you can find me online at Sort of Sullied, and next time you'll see me will be sometime after Moot. Alrighty, and now for the true fans, we shall vote. Our players will each nominate one other player, but new to Vocal Tales, you, the audience, can vote for your favorite player as well. We shall tally the votes in chat after we sign off and award our players appropriately. Player votes and audience vote are both worth an advantage on a roll of your choice. So, players, please take turns being awesome to one another. Um, I vote tonight goes to Keem slash Sayana. Um, finally, I thought I had some really dope interactions out our characters um dynamic which is cool so. uh i feel like the more i play with this person the more i'm just gonna vote for them so uh birdie you're getting my vote for tonight um that last scene when you're talking to your god was absolutely fantastic and terrifying and i love everything about it well done Thank you. And thank you, Patty, for that. I, of course. incidentally, <clears throat> am voting for you, John and Devox slinging hot fire. And also, I noticed you roll your dice before your turn is up, and I love that. And I love you for that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Would we say that he was spitting hot fire? Okay, I wrote then. that down right here on my notes. <laughs> Vote Dev Devox. Slinging hot fire. A, you know, um, it's, it's canon now. It's, it's... it's a matter of time till I write an in-character Seeker Pajat rap game sheet. Oh, Just my. you watch out. Drop the mixtape. Oh, um, I want to give my vote this time to Yane, although this game was so fun and there was so many really awesome interactions. So I want to give it to everyone, but I really appreciate Yane's gentle spirit and like, every single thing that they do um that's always really nice to kind of like you know chip through the blood and gore and then get this like wholesome bean from Mune. so i love it we have dead things for you <laughs> oh goodness oh this this all is difficult um that scene birdie was absolutely incredible but I feel like I give it to you every single time. <laughs> it's just because you think I'm cute. Be real. No, this was this was air skull up yet, and B, that scene was really badass. Did anyone else in, notice in, the red light on yes. her face? Okay, just oh, had yes. to point that out. <laughs> um, she she picked it out a couple weeks ago. Yes. So, so all that being said, uh, in in all fairness of spreading the points around, I'm gonna give mine back to Keems because that interaction between you and the Malthoon was adorable. <laughs> it's like looking inside your armor. I'd have slapped him if I was you. I'd have been like, <laughs> you know, like the scene with Mulan with uh, uh, Mushu. I can see straight through your armor. <laughs> you know, that's 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 where I I'd, I'd have gone. That was great. I'm going to give mine this week to the Malthoon because we basically just reamed on him. Like, it was we a... straight up the entire like latter half of the session. Just He even didn't have a response at some points. <laughs> which is it rare. Was, yeah, which is was, very, yeah. very rare. But the we dude were, has it coming. We were all expecting oh, yeah. him to come back, too. Like, he's just sitting there like, Whatever. It almost makes me feel bad now. <laughs> like, almost. Oh, almost. don't. No, no, no. No, no not a chance. Not a bad. chance. The fact that he's like, how did I get compared to you two? Yeah. 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah. You totally don't have an alchemical book <laughs> full full of addictive bullshit. Don't, totally don't worry, worry about, about that. that. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry. worry about it. <clears throat> I agree. <clears throat> Cheers me. to all, the Lamalthoon roast. Yes. <laughs> uh, all of those moments and more were quite amazing. I have been Patty Shakes underscore, and I encourage you, please watch Warped Tales other shows, which include this next week's going to be a little weird because, as Steve mentioned, uh, there is the Vorpal Moot happening where many, many of our cast and crew are going to be together, bonding, being awesome up in the fair state of Michigan, uh, which means uh, a lot of people aren't going to have access to do a stream. So uh, bear with me as I go through the full week of schedule for next week so you can know what's coming up. So Monday. Uh, is a special one shot of Cthulhu Dark. That'll be at 8 p.m. And these are all Eastern Standard Time times. On Tuesday, a special one shot of the Mecha Hack. Uh, that'll be run by Space Lord Pajamas. Wednesday will be our usual Acton Cthulhu game of On the Trail of the Red Widow. Thursday is going to be a special live event broadcasted from said Vorpal Moot of Calvin Ball. This is going to be, this was one of our Love Your Rebellion uh, stretch goals. So, if you donated in any way, shape, or form to Love Your Rebellion, make sure you tune in on Thursday at 8 to see this awesome game. Uh, on Friday, I will be running a special one-shot of something of D&D. TB TBD uh, players are also kind of TBD as well. So you should stay tuned. title it Shenanigans. I kind of want to. Uh, I may do a, a bunch of just run through a gambit of hit point press, big bad bosses. Who knows? Uh, um, Saturday. Uh, yes. Right. Yes. You should name it TBD, the Bastard Dragon. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Saturday is going to be another live event of Blades in the Dark. Uh, that'll be at 8 p.m. And once again, that is another Love Your Rebellion stretch goal that was uh, gracefully donated and gotten to by all of your wonderful donations. So if, once again, if you in any way, shape, or form donated to Love Your Rebellion, check out another live event on Saturday at 8 also on Saturday will be the other Dungeons and Dragons game, Usurpers of Ruination. Uh, that'll be at, uh, uh, I think the times need to be fixed on it. Well, fix the times. And then finally on Sunday will be the Fiasco game uh, at four that usually happens. So uh, that is all there. That has also been posted to our social medias and I believe it's on our website. So uh, in case you missed the show, that's what you'll be for the special super awesome schedule for next week. Speaking of Love Your Rebellion stretch goals, stay with me. I know it's getting a little late. Tomorrow at 1 p.m., I will be doing a 24-hour stream that was met by, once again, your lovely donations for Love Your Rebellion. So starting at 1 p.m. tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time, and going for 24 hours, only breaking for the Saturday game, I will be streaming on the Vocal Tales channel. Multiple types of video games. Uh, I believe I'm going to use a little bit of Boulder's Gate. Going to do a little Apex. Going to do a little uh, Red Dead Redemption, maybe. Who knows? It's going to be a plethora of items, plethora of things. Come check it out. You have 24 hours to come check me out. Question. Yes. Is that tomorrow as in Saturday the 2nd? But technically yes. right now. So, okay. Yes. Just, so just it, making sure for my own purposes. 12 hours from now. <laughs> Good luck. 12 hours from now, I will be doing a 24-hour stream. So feel free to come check that out. Uh, I believe that is all the special announcements that's going on for the Vorpal Moot uh, and for next week. Thank you for bearing with us. Uh, I know the schedule has been a little wonky recently with just everything that's going on, but I promise for the month of October, we have a set schedule we're sticking to. Uh, so yes, uh, we hope you enjoyed our story tonight. We look forward to seeing you in the future, which the future being two weeks from now, because once again, like I said, next week, I'm doing a special one shot. Two weeks from now to continue our tale. Until next time, may Corian light your way. Stay safe, stay awesome, stay adventurous, make good choices, wear a mask. <laughs>